Well, it's our favourite time of year again. Autumn is here, which means it's absolutely freezing cold and the rain has just stopped. Just the time of year that really electricians want to be heading onto the roof to fit solar panels. A little bit of moss, a little bit of slip. You pick up the old solar panel, it's a bit like a sail could send you anywhere. And you're thinking to yourself, this is an opportunity that I'm not interested in. So is there an alternative? Well, could there be? And electricians always tell us they, look, they don't like it when other people do their jobs. You know, they don't like, you know, plumbers doing a bit of electrics. So why are we on roofs doing roofers? That's roofers territory. So should we even bother? No. And is it more economical to take that out of the equation when you think of the expense of the scaffold tower, the number of hours of unskilled roofers on top of there trying to wrestle away with a bit of rail in order to support those, obviously keeping the building nice and dry. God, how many, how many headaches at night are you going to have laying there thinking, was that roof watertight when I left it? When the customer is only really concerned with cheaper electricity. Yeah, and that's what we're going to look at tonight. Should we just be fitting batteries and not bothering with a hassle of solar panels? Well, we've got some experts along to help us. We've got the team from Sunsync and back again, we've got Griff Thomas from GTEC, who usually upsets somebody. And stick around as well, because you could win a prize, because tonight we're cashing in the copper from our green cable bin. You can't win the cash, you might win a set of Wegar probes. So which one in the team is he going to upset this time? Because it was mildly me last time with Griff. Well, it was the viewers as well, Gary. Right, People yeah. took to social media, making videos, putting DC isolators in, fitting meters, things like that. But okay. we're not going there tonight. We're not. No, we're talking about is it more economical maybe or is, should the solution be installing batteries but forgetting those solar panels when I've been on that adventure, so I can't believe we're having this stream. Exactly, and we have got those two treats, as we mentioned, so yes, we have got the challenge world coming up where you can win, but you can also win by getting an early gamble in. Right. An early gamble We have, because obviously we have got some visitors from Liverpool joining us today, so we thought we'd best get rid of all the loose copper and things that can be easily removed from the building and put in the back of a car and take them to your local scrapyard. So we called in Green Cable to cash in our, uh, our wheelie bin. We did. And talking to the people in the green room, as you've now insulted one and we've worried about the other one insulting us at some point, let's bring in the, the camera to see who I guess. I remember they give us a cheeky little wave. You know, it's National Don't Bring Your Hair to Work Day today. So there we go. So Lee's in the middle. OK, so and Lee is our friend from Liverpool. And I'm sure he's going to get a little bit of banter on the way through as we do this. Now, you've already been given your first golden opportunity to get in the comments. Mm. And by getting in the comments, you can get in the register. So first of all, we want to know how much money we cashed in today when we actually got that rid of our green cable bit. That would be great. And also, we love your comments if you're watching this and you're not watching it live on Facebook or on YouTube. We like the fact that it can drive further streams. So other things and other things that we can talk about moving forward. And hence, we've got this one on the back of the one when we had Griffin the first time round as well. Yes, isn't it? we have. Yes. So get those entries in in pounds and pence. That's what we want to know. Pounds and pence, oh, not pounds, just pounds. pounds. Yeah. Richard Brute was an early 95 pounds. You need to put the pence in as well. Right. Okay. So just around that number round. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And also, we'd like to thank the wonderful people allow us to come live onto Facebook and YouTube every two weeks. We'd like to thank the great people at the Laseco Group that bring us the brands such as Laseco Lighting and BG Sync EV. We'd like to thank our good friends that were on the show last time, Lude and Palazzoli. And I think uh, I think we could say the Giovanni. Uh, Giovanni was really pleased with his stream because he even sent out the bit when he cooed down the tool from above. And we've got another Rick's Tool time this evening. And the wonderful people at Doncaster Cable, award-winning PV Ultra and other cables that they've invented along the way along with the staples of the electrical industry as well. Mm, there's, some good, there's some good prices coming in there. Oh, is there? Yeah, yeah, clear, I think there's some customers, clearly clearly there's some people who've filled up some wheelie bins with cable in the past. And they've got an idea now, are they? Yeah, yeah. I could imagine what a full yeah. bin. And it was a full bin as well that we sent it in. Yeah. Okay, so it was a delicious, we've got a nice treat, and that's, uh, that's going to be Joe's segment tonight, isn't it? We've got some brilliant segments. So we've got the two Joes. Mm. Okay, we've got, uh, also we've got Griff, and we're going to hear from Sunsync's uh, CEO as well. Keith, uh, Keith Goff Keith, is on Keith, there. Yes, he is. So in, it in, should be really good. Couldn't be here in person. Yeah, it is. Up in spirit. Batteries, not solar. That seems counterintuitive to me. So this is going to be a tough one for me this evening, having got my solar panels installed and a battery. You're probably going to unpick this and suggest maybe that I've... Uh, well, it is. Well, not me, Gary. I think we best bring our guests Shall in, we bring actually, because they're the experts in this, or they're better be. Otherwise, we'll we're be... We're in a world of trouble. We'll be in a world of trouble. So it is my pleasure. Introduce Griff Thomas, a return guest to the show, James Lydon and Lee Dobson from Sunsink. Here they come. <laughs> 
Cheers. Oh, obviously, because we've got an extra guest, we've had to bring out the emergency chair. So, Griff's <laughs> taken on the emergency chair at the end there. So, we did Ultra, that before, that's... we've done that before, yes. Fishing You're sitting rod. on a roll of PV Ultra. There's I'd say I'm, I'm sitting on it, I'm taking it home. All oh, right, okay. <laughs> well, there you go. Have you not got any? I might have a little bit. Oh, right. Tucked okay. Away. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Don't tell Doncaster Cable. No, okay. They, they oh, like loads of prices coming right. in for that for that cable bin. Be really interesting. Thank you very much for joining us. So, yeah, you're from Sunsink, and we're obviously going to get into all that. But let's, first of all, shall we start with you, James? Let's have a little bit about yourself in about 60 seconds. Fantastic. Thanks for having us. Um, good evening. I'm James Lydon. I'm the uh, Northern Sales Manager for Sunsink in the UK. Um, so I look after um, whether it's our independent distributors or national distributors in the, new, uh, in the UK, whether it's training, um, visiting clients. So yeah, very passionate about renewables and glad to be here. Okay, so it must be the world's most difficult job in this current climate where energy prices are soaring and you're trying to sell a renewable uh, source of energy into a property or a business that can save them money. You must be really struggling to sell stuff, I would imagine, can you? It's enough to make you lose your hair. Yeah, I would imagine it is, yeah. I imagine those bonuses every month come sailing in. <laughs> Lee, so tell us about yourself in 60 seconds. Yeah, so I'm Lee and I'm the UK technical lead. Um, I'm here to try and support this, basically our technical staff that we've got in the UK and all the installers on site. Um, so everyone who's got a problem calls in and I try, I try and assist them. <laughs> There's probably a lot of calls at the moment. We're relatively new over the last few years in the UK. Uh, but it is, it's getting there and we're, uh, we're growing as we go. Okay, all right. So, you know, technical, so yeah, you got the easier of the two jobs there. Yeah. Which nothing technical in there, was there for you, James? The, the more work I do, the more work <laughs> okay, does, okay, so. okay. Well, hopefully not, because hopefully the system, my system hasn't uh, caused me any issues at all. Causing issues brings me to you, Griff. Yes, after last time, surprised you back for a second run at it. Well, we're grateful to have you here. But can you tell us again in 60 seconds all about yourself? Yeah, so my name's Griff Thomas, and I'm Managing Director of GTEC Training Limited. We deliver training all over the UK predominantly on renewables. Um, I spend a lot of time also hunting out rogue DC isolators, trying to remove them from installations after the last uh, gig that we did together. Um, and I also contribute to a lot of the national standards as well. So working alongside the guys at the IET to write the codes of practice and various other documents around the, the renewable and emerging technologies. And we're in safe hands. We know that from last time. And yes, we did have the, the rogue DC isolators that don't need to be installed along with kilowatt hour meters and all the rest. And I'm sure there's some content coming our way shortly, isn't there? Right? There is. Well, we'll be looking at your plant room, Gary. <laughs> <laughs> uh, toilet and basin. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. yes, so I'm sure I'm going to get another paste as we go through this morning. You've even taken to ringing me up and messaging me with the things that I should or shouldn't oh, have at times. Absolutely. Yeah. Every time I see those clips of your plant room, I'm sat there going, there's another one. You didn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I've solved the end cap on the trunk in though, so that's been in. Yes, yeah, so we're all sorted. Yeah. Right. And uh, we've got a Paul Reynard comment in your shoes, Lee. That, uh, was that a friendly local installer, Paul Reynard? Yeah. yeah. It's quite local to here, to be fair. Yeah, shoes. Right, yeah. Yeah. Shoes. Let's have them bring them in then. So well, look at those hand mirrors. Oh, yeah. Look at them bad Freshly boys. Freshly polished this morning. Lift it up. Let's look, look at that. Hey. No. Not got a big shoe, though. No, 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 no. Oh, no. no. You know, so people with their little shoes. Yeah. Little, little feet. Shoes. That's what they say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, it is time, obviously, to choose, uh, well, to see if our guests are actually any good on the tools. So, background, you didn't say your background, electrical background? Yeah, so I've got an electrical engineering background. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, got a degree in electrical engineering, but sadly not been on the tools. So yeah. uh, Never been on anything, the tools? No. So, anything further on from this video, <laughs> please take with yeah. a bit of DIY at home. I'm just going to say no until <laughs> the video. Okay, okay. Yep. <laughs> Liverpool area, have you ever managed to get a car to work that didn't have a set of keys? <laughs> no? Okay. <laughs> James, same question to yourself. Um, no, no on the tools experience bar, basic DIY. Uh, and the closest I personally get to electronics is plugging my laptop in. Um, so that is my explanation for... I imagine what you're about to see on my uh, challenge. Well, it's obviously Before time for the uh, <laughs> time for the viewers to join in. So do we think, have our guests hoodwinked us? It is time to get your times in. You have to do two things tonight because we've got two guests. You have to say, who do you think will be the fastest? Will it be James or will it be Lee? And the time you think they will complete the challenge in. So you want, if it's Lee, you want Lee, 17 hours, 57 minutes. <laughs> or if it's James, three months and two days. <laughs> Yeah, or have we just hoodwinked people, Gary? No, well, I, I think I haven't seen it, so I've only yeah. got from what they're going on. I think this could be a close one. I think there's more pride at stake here, maybe, than time, I, think, I would I suggest. Think the, the plaster on my finger <laughs> might give away uh, my 
uh, lack of uh, electrical wiring skills also. Did you enjoy it in race one, two or three? Uh, yeah, it was, it was emotional. <laughs> so so when, when was the injury occurred? Race one, two or race three? Race one. Oh, one. so you're carrying an injury yeah. for two of them. Yeah. Oh, right, okay. Well, yeah. the lady with one hand never moaned. So uh, yeah, your cut <laughs> finger doesn't watch with us at all. We got, we're nearly there. So oh, we don't know who's going to be at first. Yeah, I mean, you've got some plenty of regular people. And Joel Egan's on there. He's watching you. Obviously, he was supposed to be here as well. He cried <laughs> off with, oh, a, yeah. with, a, with, a, with, a, with a little cold or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, they it? called so, it a cold. Don't cheers, they? Joel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So yeah. it's not the Jolie, Jolene, Jolie. We couldn't do that this time, could we? Because he wasn't it. Right, are we going to bang it on then? So loads of time, yeah, yeah, let's go for it. Let's go for it. Let's go for it. Who's up first then? So uh, here sure we go. Come on, I don't know. We haven't seen this. No, we haven't. Ooh, oh, Lee's up first. Oh, he's used to getting inside enclosures very quickly, I would imagine, coming from the Liverpool area. <laughs> he can have uh, screws out of that as quick as he can have four tyres off a Cortina. OK, so here we go. Front off. Oh, you're on your edge there, guys. I know, I know. Cortina. Yes, we're gone there. Certainly. Good start, I would suggest. the radio good, frequency good from a range Ooh. Well, that looks lumpy at the top right, end. Okay, here we go. Full set ahead. That was good. Oh. Impressive. Hang on though. a second. Hang on. I'm rethinking. You use fish one, wires it? like that to get inside cars, didn't you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Normally, three, you could just get the window down far enough. You just better hook the uh, hook the door catch open. Allegedly. Yeah. Okay. Oh, All we're right. down the bottom now. We're up and down here. Here we go. So, using the um, Wago stripping tools, it always suggests a whiff of somebody who hasn't got a clue if they're borrowing the tools from us. Okay, here we go. So, yeah. nice. Oh, gaffer tape? <laughs> no, no, he's got them up without it. So, uh, yeah, it's all good. Got the old uh, wedding pros there with the old one knee. So, will you get the colours around the right way? This is a good start. This is, you're under pressure here, James. You know that. Yeah. You're going to be under pressure. Very aware of that. Yeah. Yeah. Just remember, if it looks slow, it usually is. Yeah, this looks good. Obviously, I would imagine a bit of uh, quality editing going on here. Has this been sped up there? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> we, have to, we're, we, have, yeah, we do try to keep the show under two hours. <laughs> so. Okay, going to earth the back boys. You seem to know oh. your way around those cutters, though. First timers with those? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's pretty good. Greek horse, he must have done a little bit of practice. Yeah. He must have got a soldering iron out at some point. Oh, right. Is that because it's full of oh. practical at all? They do it all on, uh, on a laptop now, on, yeah. on CAD and everything, yeah. Apparently they do. Yeah. The kids today. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey? No, they're born. <laughs> well, that's yeah. a different use of a screwdriver, isn't it? Never been in the Cortina either, have you? No, no. no. <laughs> Yeah. Could have been Austin Agro. Yeah. No, Gary, it's a credit card for all these. Yeah, oh, is it? All done on a laptop. <laughs> Fishing yeah. scams, stuff like that. Yeah. Right. It's slow putting it back together, though. Never done yeah. that. Yeah, well, you normally run off by now, aren't right. you? Right. I, I think this is the first time we've ever had somebody do the socket first and then yeah, get to go the up, to, uh, up yeah. to the consumer unit. Yes, it's uh, good. That's We're in a Luden consumer unit. It was great to have them on last time out as well. Now available oh, in black. Yeah, I was just about to say that. You can now get a black one as well. Sounds oh. good. Oh, there you go. Mouth up there, catching yeah. a few flies. Yeah. yeah. Concentration. Yeah, that's, Absolutely. that's good concentration there. Can I bite your fingernails as well, so it's all good. So here we go. Left-handed. <laughs> yeah. Left best people are. Best people are. Oh. Yeah, don't go there, Griff. I'm left-handed. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you said the best people are. Yeah, left-handed. Yeah. Oh. yeah. And I'll game a left-handed screwdriver as well, which is handy. So CPC to go. Look, you're dressing them in. This is good. This is good. Here we go. And final connection, and Lee is done. Just got to press. And what I like about this, you're at the top now for the stop button. Look at that. Oh, and calm. Well, we know who's next. Right, here, here we go. James. Oof. Oh, dear. Straight off with a bit of glare. Look at that. Look at that. Two lights there. There's a bit of force oh, off that then, wasn't there? There is, yeah. There is. Oh, hang on. What are we doing here? I don't think we know. <laughs> here we go. Ah, oh, we left the, oh, we left oh. the game already there, didn't we? <laughs> we, got the, we got the cover off. Okay, yeah. You're trying to remember the instructions that badly that, yeah, you, oh, you've forgotten oh, some of the key right, ones. Screws are out. Somebody glued the, uh, yeah. the cover on. Okay. We like excuses. Got it up. Well done. Yeah. This is a good start. Round the Seco Bend and into the Luden Consumer Unit. It's relaxed right. here. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. For the blood to start squirting out, really. I don't it? think this was the... Uh... That the bloody version. We well, said it was the first one. That's why I asked you. So That's if it was the first one, it will be the first one, I would imagine. <coughs> I think he had a couple of runs in. Oh, did he? Yeah, could be, could be any one. Oh, Smiling. Oh. Oh. Definitely the first one. There's no plaster on that finger. No. <laughs> ah, right. Yeah. Here we go. So. Right, plenty of slack on the cables. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Right, post that one in there. Just, oh. yeah. Oh, oh yeah, that's blocked that's the view. Look, showed everyone you're married. I like the way you did that. Yeah. <laughs> the ladies obey there, were not it? It's like, oh, I am married here, folks. Yeah. Oh, instant oh. read. What's happened here? Oh. Oh. oh, like a coiled spring. Oh. Yeah. We're back in again. Did did tell you both oh. about the steps. You didn't listen to that advice. You can't see that cage opening, can you? 
No, oh, you're the, the wrong one. Oh, slack no. on those cables. The face. Yeah. <laughs> oh. What a good chuckle there. I think Rick's Rick. Did you come straight from a swimming pool? Did you manage to get the cap off? Oh, oh. there we go. Full <laughs> ray mode. Ray mode yeah. It's full ray mode. It was the right idea. Yeah, straight from the swimming pool, left the cap on. And uh, yeah, here we go. Right. Oh, still, got the, still got the socket to do. Right, here we go. Let's see this. What are we going for? Hang on. What are we after? Lost the, lost the tools. Hey! <laughs> hey. He Raymoed the tools out of the way. I liked it. Oh, dear me. So, did you know the full Raymo was coming up? Did you, did you know it was No, it's the, yeah, it's no. the first I've seen of it. That's why I encourage people to use the step so we can catch yeah. them out on the full Raymo. <laughs> so when I say to you, have you watched this before? And you say, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's obviously <laughs> coming apart now. Isn't it? Really, right? <laughs> you haven't really watched it, have you? You've, you've come along hoping that you get away with it. To be it. fair, though, right. he's honest, though. That he, he isn't on the tools, is he? No, no, no. No, I can see that. Absolutely, yeah. Wow. And we sped this up. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's, that's good. Three attempts, okay? So you get your time for your best attempt, okay? So we might not be watching your best attempt here. What we tend to do now is take the most comical one, obviously, and we go through. I know you had some issues with some screws at one point. You said you sort of decided to spray them all over the floor, okay? And that made it a little bit more tricky. You went the wrong... Oh, look how short that one is. I like your style, then. It's going to make it nice and interesting on the protective conductor in the back of the box. How long isn't that? It's gone short. We go. <laughs> oh, look. Oh, <laughs> come oh, here, oh, come oh. here. Come on. Come on, socket. Come to me. <laughs> look at that. You're one of them ones we all hate. Then you pull it off, nothing comes away. Look at right, this. Here we, we go. go. So two screws away from completion. Can we get it? Oh. Wedding band back oh, in. it again. Look at that. Yes. Yep, right. One more. What's well, it like going on holiday? Do you have to wear a hat permanently when you're on holiday? Do you come back with like that? They call it a golfer's hat, don't they? Where you've got like everything's brown down here, and then when you take it off, you've got a, a white dog. No, normally, a sombrero uh, needed. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, it's, uh, half a tan. <laughs> okay. We, uh, we Calm and collected. People are saying that was Ross's advice there. Second fastest person on the board. He thought you were slow. I think it's been a polite way of saying slow. I think we'd take that one. Yeah, I don't think Ross's time's in uh, any danger at 2.53, even though he got thrashed mm. by James Finney at 2.44, and his video went out, didn't it, in the last seven days? I did have another yeah. chance to look at that. Yeah, yeah, so I've watched it, yeah, so, so it's quite All oh, right, so plenty of people on who've done this before. We've got Neil Bridgman, we've got Darren Cranis on there, we've got Ross. Oh, Darren. Got plenty, yes. Yeah, oh, Darren Cranis well. on, yeah, it was great. Let's have a little look over to see yeah. what some times. Anyone uh, anyone else you recognise on there? You sort of... You must know Q-cells. Yeah. Ross at Q-cells. Yeah, Q-cells. Yeah, um, he's, down the, he's down the bottom, Gary. Is he? Oh, Ross. <laughs> Hanging on, he's, oh, we're, we're going to have to come up with things soon. People are going to have to end up vanishing off into car land <laughs> soon. Okay, so we're right down there. Oh, yeah. Okay, you come around. All so, right. uh, so obviously, obviously Griff is a, is a good target. Now look at that, you've gone above Darren Cranis again. Oh, there. always, oh, look at always, that. always, always on top of yeah. <laughs> that. Here we go. Oh, so, uh, so four minutes, would you say it's outrageous for anyone to be over four minutes? Uh, ooh, OK, let's have a look here. Uh, it is... Uh, Neil, yeah, well, I mean, yeah. I mean, people should just basically give up the jobs, shouldn't they, if they're on that, but... Uh, Who are you starting with? Uh, oh, I'll start with James, actually. Oh, Gary. That's not a good sign, James. <laughs> yeah, that was a good sign. Right. So, yeah, you, so you didn't yeah, do this. Yeah, I think. You didn't do this in four minutes. No, no, I'm going to be crouching right down here. Ooh, oh, no. oh, oh, my word. You did this in six minutes oh, and 40 seconds. One second slower than the fastest Indian on the board there, down at Chris there. So with David Barnes from Nipex. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. So he's actually slower than Rick. I know, I'm going to have to... Yeah, that's a first, oh, that actually. So we're first. slower than Rick. Rick will be delighted. We'll come on to where Rick is in a little bit, yeah. So that you could be off to Carl Land in another few... Uh, in a few weeks. Uh, right. So, Lee, <laughs> so the audience thought you would be quicker, actually. Uh, not that much quicker, I must say. <laughs> that's, the one, that's the one. So you're in, uh, you're not in four-minute territory. You are in five-minute territory. Oh, so, again, I'm off back down again. I tell you that, I shouldn't have even got up. We're going to have to start storing these down here as a clue. People normally say, let's have a look. You're right, you did this in five minutes and 38, which just puts you above your friend Paul Elcock there. Oh, OK. So, and that's also faster than faster than Rick. Oh yeah, well, everyone's been faster than Rick, so that's good. That's pretty good. So yeah, in, in solid non-electrician territory there. Yeah, so, yeah but not put, putting any flags up though, are you? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> wow. Yeah, you you did have a whiff that you weren't going to be as quick. 
and yeah. you, were, you were correct there, but that was awful, your time, wasn't Thank it? Really? Yes. <laughs> awful. It was like, yeah. Well done, Lee. Five, anything in five minutes is good. It just looks worse now because the amount of people on there, but five minutes is a, is a nice number to be in. Obviously, yeah. three minutes is a lot better number to be in. And you're above Darren Kranitz. Above well. Darren, yes. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, when I was here a bit earlier on, we actually got down to the the decimal places and worked out that I was about 0.4 of a second faster than Darren. So okay. sadly, I'm, I'm, I'm much better. We're studying the yeah, footage yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. are, yeah, yeah, yeah. Match yeah. the two together yeah. later. Yeah, that, Joe. that was much appreciated. And, uh, uh, you're even struggling on alphabetical order on first and second names to actually be above him. So yeah, yeah. So, so uh, it was great fun. Yeah, so yeah, brilliant. Well done. Thank you very much. Enjoy We'd it. like to present you with the uh, the inaugural shirt, wouldn't we? Yes. The, uh, it's behind you, Gordon. That's so, a bit uh, warm, I'm bringing hand cam oh, as well. So thank you. Yes, if you do the challenge, and Paul Reynard sent us a super chat. Wants to wants to have a go at the challenge. We'll have to okay, should we invite yeah, Paul along. And that is he? Yeah. Ooh, I don't know. You know, <laughs> bit of a risky one that. Yeah. Would he be faster than you? Do you think? Well, if he is, we just don't show it. Well, there you go. So there you go. Look, you only get this. The next show you're at, you can, well, look, you can yeah, wear one. There you go. So these. you're a big Evertonian fan. So it's like getting your first <laughs> Everton shirt there. I notice you wear all black. I suppose that's a Liverpool thing, so you don't get seen at night when you're darting around between the alleys. So that's all good there, Lee. And let's have a look at James. We've got one for Griff as well. Yeah. Oh, we've got, got one, one for last time as well. I do. I think they're waiting for my size to come in. What size is it, Griff, um, that one? That one, extra large. Is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it? Let's yeah. have a look in the label. Let's have a little <laughs> look, look at have a look at your extra large label. There you go. Eh? There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think there's a two in there somewhere. Yeah. That's yeah. Different. <laughs> <laughs> We've only got two different sizes. We've got drowned you or really drowned you. So, uh, yeah, it's good. Well, that was good fun. Well, yeah. we enjoyed that. Yeah. It was good fun. And but you were worried about that. Someone was worried. Who, who emailed in earlier in the week? It was re you oh, it was me, yeah. yeah. I emailed in. Yeah. Last minute got dropped in and I was like, electrician's challenge, what's this? Is this going to be something someone's never thought of before? Doesn't know how to work. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, think, I think if I didn't have the near-death experience of uh, cutting a main artery, I think I could have done it uh, maybe a couple of minutes faster, but maybe next time. We'll send the cleaning bill through. We'll have to disinfect the old set. There was blood everywhere. I came back in, it was like a war zone. <laughs> One tiny cut like gallons Day of... Day after Halloween. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was like... Whoa. So that's so brilliant. Set the scene. We're, we're all in now, and we're, we're, we're nice and comfortable. Let's get into the, the the meat of this then. So we're suggesting you've you you've done me every time now. So you you said to me, I think the last time we met each other, you said to me, I don't know why you bothered with solar panels. You could have just done batteries. Well, and I mean, you only had four fitted, right? You should have six. had six. I had six. Didn't you had six. You should have had eight. eight. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, well, let's yeah, just yeah. have a look. We've got a picture of Gary's roof. <laughs> okay, so it's a lovely it. looking roof as well. Mine my, yeah, my, was. Yeah. <laughs> look at that. Fantastic. Right. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah, so that was your, that's your six solar panels. Yeah. Yes, they're lovely. A lot of effort to get them up there, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Let's, let's, let's be brutally honest about this. So, on reflection, it's the same amount of effort almost if I'd had twice as many panels. Yeah. Okay, a couple of extra clips I understand to hold the rail on, maybe a joining piece and all the rest of it. Scaffold tower's the same. The two people on the roof will be the same. I would imagine for the actual installation part of it, it's going to take only a few minutes more to put yep. more panels That's on. Yep. So I understand that. And then you peel it back on what we're going to talk about today. Mm. There's a lot of money been invested into that roof. Yeah, so not necessarily the cost team on there, Joe. Yeah, but not, not yeah. invested necessarily in the cost of the panels because yeah. we understand now panels are very, very reasonable. So that's great, especially if you're doing maybe uh, one-story flat roofs, as our good friend at Apprentice One to One is. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. But now, when you look back at trying to get your money back and obviously make a difference and go green, and you threw it at me, maybe you just needed batteries, Gary. Okay. Maybe you did. Yeah, I know. T keep that air fryer ticking along. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the, the one I brought a picture of me air fryer in. But, but yeah, so we're going we're gonna to walk this through today, probably at most times giving me a smack on the wrist. But could we have made equal impact for the customer? Because we're interested, if I put my customer hat on, I'm interested in saving money. Okay? So if I don't need something and can save money, that's a really good option, potentially, when you think I only got six panels on the roof for the effort that it cost. Mm. Okay, that's where we're going. I'm looking at that roof, Gary. I bet you're worried at night, aren't you? You're thinking the storms are coming. Are those tiles on properly? Uh, uh, Is there going to be a damp patch appearing in the bedroom roof? I trust that's you. Not you no, no. not quite getting to the toilet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, um, I can't get to the toilet now because it's it's full of batteries. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> it's my plant room. Yeah, only one at the minute. At the minute. At the minute. Please tell me at the minute, James. At the minute. Just, just one for now. <laughs> for now. Well, let's now. have a look okay. at the plant room as well. Yeah. While we're there, so this is Gary's plant room which happens to have a basin and toilet fitted It does, to it. yeah. Okay, so, yeah, and I'm, I'm cool with that. So, um, me and the wife, I'm absolutely cool with that because 
I think the benefit of being green means that doesn't bother me at all. It's in a toilet at the end of the day. There's only a couple of things we ever do in there, and one of them is obviously clean and tidy. Okay, so that's fine. So I've got no worries with that at all. But like I said, about the roof, I must admit, I still look up every time I walk into my bedroom because I'm thinking, will I see a brown patch? I trust Sean wholeheartedly and watched him do the job and it was fantastic. But you still got that mental approach to it is that I watched an electrician with a different set of skills invade my roof, followed by I live there when he's left. So I understand all these from a client's point of view, these are, mm -hmm. okay? I was the client sometimes and cameraman others. So you said and you said, maybe there is a different solution, but yeah. maybe one that could be considered. Yeah, but battery only or electrical energy storage in the posh world. Um, why not just look at that and look at, at the different tariff options that are op uh, open to you. From a contractor's perspective, there's no roof work. So it's the case of going along and apparently in about an hour with some systems, uh, just <laughs> fitting a, a battery in place and connecting it up to uh, to the house system, whatever that might be, wherever it's going. Depends a little bit on what purpose it's there to serve. Um, and using that to, to take advantage of cheap tariffs to store it, store the energy, and then discharging it when it's a higher tariff period of time. And is this a solution that Sunsync offer? Yeah, definitely. We've, um, you know, we've got our standard hybrid kit with batteries, um, which are great as a PV connected system or even a standalone AC coupled system for you know using that cheaper power from the grid. Um, we have uh, a new product that's just launched in the UK called Lifelink. Um, this is an all in one unit, so it's available in three different sizes from 2.5 kilowatt up to 5 kilowatt. We were saving that to the second section. We went straight to sales pitch there, young man. Well done. Keep going, keep going. He's off, yeah. he's off. Well, keep we may show it later on secretly in a bit of footage. Yeah, go on. So, yeah, we do, we do an all in one unit, yes. which is you know, great for this, this market of AC coupling um, and utilising that cheaper power off peak. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to need a bit of convincing, Gordon. Can well, you convince me. Well, hold on. Well, obviously we know. Obviously, ever since you've had solar, yeah, you like to bore people to death <laughs> yeah. with the generation. I do. Probably about ten times a day, I at love least. It. I love it. I, I, it doesn't okay. matter if someone's not interested in the street as well. You will accost them and <laughs> yeah. give them a little one-to-one -one session. And again, I think that's part of the journey. I think if once you've gone there, the, you know, it's so incredible to think. And I like the way they, they sometimes call it a power plant. You've got your own producing set at home producing electricity, but if somebody has been in the electrical industry since the age of 16, I quite like to look at the fact that I've generated energy that I've stored or used in my house. I love that. And that might be an electrical thing, it might just be a me thing, I don't know. But I absolutely love that. Mm. But there's still other ways, isn't there? Well, let's have a little look. Someone's already said it. There'd have to be a pretty good differential between the peak and off-peak rates to justify it. So we, uh, okay. at, uh, just to show you how much you're missing on, Gary, I had, a, I had a dive into the Sunsync <laughs> inverter today to look at the dynamic prices on the Agile Octopus, which okay. is half hourly rates. I think we're going to bring the first one in. So just okay. think, early hours of this morning, you could have been buying in your power at an average of 7.2 pence a kilowatt. And that, is that for three hours? That's for, yep, yeah. Yep. Yep, three yeah hours. So probably enough time to, to fill a 10 kilowatt battery. We know you've only got five. <laughs> James, but I'm getting another one, aren't I, James? Promise me I'm getting another one. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. You've only got five kilowatt hours? Um, yeah, because I haven't sent the other one yet. Oh. So I don't want to bring it up too many times tonight. Yeah. Put it in the comments. <laughs> When's so Gary getting his battery? This, this was, uh, yeah, that's what you could have bought in that. Oh. So, hang on. So, that's, hang on. Much hang on. Well, 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 either, yeah. No, hang on, because this is new to me. You're yeah. throwing this stuff at me. So, I could have charged up from 3.30 in the morning till 6 o'clock at an average of about 7 pence. Yes. So, I could have filled my two batteries. I've only got one, but we'll come back to it. For 72 pence. Yes. Now, I reckon my house runs at between 7 and 10 kilowatt hours. Yeah. Okay? Depending whether I'm at home or whether the kids are. So, stat, yeah, I'm never at home. But, yeah. So, so, so I could have gone... I'm, I'm going to run the risk here and just charged up those batteries for 72p. Mm -hmm. And if it had been the best day ever, just took one for the team. Yeah. yeah. If I'd have hopefully got an export tariff, I'm not there yet. I'm building this series up. Yeah. I haven't got an export tariff. That's a gamble worth making in this time of year. Because yeah. I've got, I, I managed, I think, to create less than 1.2 kilowatt hours today. So your battery's not full. 
Well, yeah. no, and, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, no. and got a whiff in it. It's like it's empty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Michelle's already in. She's got a feeling that you're going to go through a change of energy supply yeah, she, she, very she's soon. Not, she's not looking forward to so that. Obviously, <laughs> now because your battery's not full, you're buying in some energy. So let's go to the next slide. So you're now buying in. If you're, if you're obviously the family like to eat at a sensible hour. <laughs> yeah, normally yeah. sort of tea time. We've only got one tariff, so we're yeah. we're on whatever the cap is. So you're on about thirty-five pence. So you've now probably used that ten kilowatt hours. You've paid three pound fifty. Oh, and again, yeah, well, 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 hang on, let's, let's just stand on a second. This is, this, yeah, Griff's joining in as well. Yeah, that's what we're bringing up your holiday. Yeah. Right, okay, so, so that doesn't sound a lot. You know, not many people are going to lose a lot of sleep over £3.50 and saving, therefore, £2.78. But my big fear is mm. we've just started this awful looking weather, yeah. and I reckon we won't break out of it until March if normal. I've got months of this, and that's for one day. Yeah, so if you, you put that £2.78 by a year... Oh, right. It's the best part of £1,000. Right. Of energy, I've got to buy anyhow. Oh, yeah. I think we need a run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, look at that tomorrow. Today and tomorrow, it's five. Oh. Uh, look at, I've never seen Ooh. any money before. Wait, wait, is that, did, I thought the scrap man didn't pay in cash. <laughs> we gonna, it wasn't for Liverpool, was he? It doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so... So let's let's work this through then. So, yeah, I, I I like that because you've got the option of fixing your energy price. Okay, that that agile tariff will move around, and this is a discussion we had at a show. I think I've got an option of fixing my energy price, and if I didn't have the expense of the the roof and me liking the fact that I look at the weather and is it going to be sunny and all the rest of it, I, I'm I'm almost in control of my energy prices as long as I buy them in on the agile tariff. And you've told me before that tariff has actually fallen to a negative value. Yeah, it was. Last week, I was looking on the train just to see how much one you were bleating on about. about your I said, well, you could have... It was negative, yeah. I think we were paying you two pence a kilowatt hour to take the energy. Right. I think it was about three months ago, Octopus were paying people one pound for every, every unit they used, not exported, they used. So it was obviously a day where there was massive overproduction uh, mm -hmm. in the UK, so it's... Uh, yeah, quite extraordinary. Okay. In, okay. In, in the back end of the grid, we've oh, are got... Oh, you join in as well? We, yeah, well, I thought so. I was just waiting for you to segue in. You're, you're a bit sleepy tonight, though. It's, it's probably the hair that's keeping you warm on top and yeah, uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uncomfortable um, hot. We, we've got huge generating capacity. We've now got lots of solar. We've got lots of wind going on as well. And in a time when we've got loads of wind blowing and it's bright, sunny days, we've got all that generation. We've got to remember it's got to go somewhere. It's AC, so either we're going to store it, we're going to use it to pump those hydro plants up, uh, pump the water up to the top of the hill. There's only so much of that you can do. And at some point, they're going to want to encourage you to use it because it's cheaper to pay you, Gary, to use it than it is to shut down the power station. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and this, is, this stinks of opportunity to me. I think, I think electricians and the ones we've spoke to, and we've seen them in lots of shows where they'd be actually directed at solar and battery or other shows, is it's the roof. That's the one thing I always talk about. Maybe you need to get yourself in with a roofer, maybe combine it, let them do the bit they're good at. We know that there's some great training out there. People can be shown how to do a roof. I watch Sean do mine brilliantly. I've got no problem with that at all. But it could be the barrier for a certain percentage of electricians to think, I don't want to do roofs and scaffolding. So I'm going to turn down this opportunity. But I think today we're going to be able to show a really compelling story of actually doing all the other stuff. It'll still be, if I use your system, it'll still be solar ready, won't it? Of course, yeah. But I will be benefiting from the minute I start it. Yeah. And it just seems like too good of an opportunity to turn away to well, it. Someone's already, yeah, someone's already shifted. It's great, obviously, if you live in an apartment, that's yeah. an expensive flat if it's not owned by the council. <laughs> uh, that's the, uh, yeah, obviously for apartments and things like that is, a, is, a, is an option, Yeah, isn't it? So, yeah, yeah. because Someone's already got, are you going to get a wind turbine? Uh, well... Actually, we've had some conversations. We've been talking about a system. Obviously, I don't think I'd get up to the... Is it a 12 kilowatt hour? Yeah, so we turbine? was at a site to this morning uh, where somebody installed a 12 kilowatt wind turbine on a 12 kilowatt inverter. Yeah. Um, as soon as we turned that on, so like the weather's not been great today. No. But we turned that on and straight away it was up at 10 kilowatt. And that was just constantly churning out. So even now where it's pitch black at night, it's still giving power to the house. So it's another great way of giving power into the, mm. into the home. Yeah. So that, that side there, they've, they've got one of our hybrid inverters and our hybrid inverters will take wind power or PV power. Um, so both the inputs can be wind, both can be PV or a mixture of the two. Okay. So, um, you know, some people will have PV and they'll leave 
one of the MPPTs free for the future to future-proof themselves if they do want a wind turbine. Um, so it was quite an interesting site today. It's one you can keep. It's like the thermos flask of uh, inverters. There you go. It'll put things in that are cold and keep them cold. It'll put things in that are hot and keep them hot. Doesn't matter which one you put them, but you can't put them both in together. And you can with yours. There you have go. wind and solar, can yeah. you? Wow, thermos flask of the electrical industry. So mm. sun sink inverters, love it. Okay, so so I'm underway. Yeah. This agile tariff, let's be, let's, be, let's be devilment in the thing. Is it going to be every day? Is it going to be an option every day for me to charge cheaply? Or if I jump on an agile tariff, hoping to get some cheap energy in my battery, that all of a sudden I find mysteriously it's not as cheap and I'm, I'm now paying one pound at six o'clock at night. So the challenge is you set the buy price. Yeah. So you set when the price drops under a certain limit, start charging your battery. Yes. And then obviously you can then choose to sell it if it goes above a certain price as well. So you're in charge. So the risk would be, and this is going to really play on your mind, Gary. Yeah, go on do it. You could you could back the wrong horse. You could you could set your charge <laughs> rate too high. So imagine you'd no. set it at seven pence. No, no, yeah? no, you, no. You just got up in the morning. You think I'm going to I'm going to charge when it hits seven pence, but then later in the day they're paying you two yeah. pence. I understand that. Yeah, yeah. I understand. I understand that's a risk, but. If I know I'm going to use 10 kilowatt hours and I know that's at 35p without playing the game and I can get it at anything under 35p, I've already won, mm -hmm. ignoring the cost of the battery and the inverter. Yeah. Okay, I've already won. So if I got it at half that price, if I, if I went, I'm just going to set it at 20 pence, yeah. I'm already winning because all the other times I'll be at 35. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I don't think that's a game you need. You don't even have to play. You, you can probably have a little bit of fun with it, but I think once you get to a certain point in the in the payback system, you just can you can just lock it in, can you? I'm going to now say my energy is only going to be twenty p. And, and and if you don't want to get involved in any of that, there's always the really simple option of going for something like a straightforward economy seven type tariff, which right. is still available. Mm -hmm. So that's going to give you seven hours of off peak at night. Um, some of them now are being advertised as vehicle charging, but some of those tariffs will allow you to charge the battery um, as well. Some of them down to 10 pence a unit as a flat rate guaranteed. So you don't need to think about that baseline price, what you're going to buy at, what you're going to sell at. It's a 10 pence difference to a 30 pence yeah. um, import tariff. It's 20 pence a unit guaranteed, two pound a day, 730 pounds a year yeah. on a 10 kilowatt hour per day usage. And, and that's what I am about. So in Gary Goes Green, which is on the eFix Energy channel, you'll see in my journey through this, episode two's been shot and ready for release. Episode three, you'll see tonight, but will get released on the Energy channel as well. So yeah, it, it's yeah, it's locking your energy prices in at a comfortable rate, isn't it? It's, you know, we're yeah. all worried now we've lost 7% reduction in energy prices, but we lost the cap, so we've been paying more. But if you got it in a 20 pence, you won. Yeah, yeah you, absolutely. You, you can choose that rate on our app. So uh, in the Sunsync Connect app, if you're normally paying, let's say, 35 pence per yep. unit peak, in our app, you can you choose Octopus. We've got the continuous API with Octopus where it's got the, the live tariff all the time. So like you said, you don't have to gamble all the way down to seven and a half pence or eight pence. You can set it at a level that you're comfortable at, whether it's 15 pence. Yeah. And then our system will automatically charge the batteries for you once it goes below that threshold that you set. Yeah. And you can also flip it on its head as well. So um, you can do energy trading through our app also. So you can set, okay, I want to charge the batteries from the grid at 15 pence. Or if there is a, a high demand in the UK, I want to sell back to the grid. You yeah. can set at what rate you want to sell back to the mat and there you know, the sell rate is part of the, the continuous um, price in that. So you're talking about exporting, exporting the energy back, back the from the battery to the grid and being paid by your energy provider to yeah. do that. And what sort of money can people get <clears throat> for that? So, you know, on non-windy overcast days when there's a big demand uh, on, on the network, you know, sometimes you might be getting paid upwards of 40 pence per unit. Or if, if you know, if the customer's bought that power in at 15 pence, it's it's win-win. It's 25 pence. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Welcome to this week's maths challenge. So, so hang on, I've had a little think here. I'm, I'm seeing this in the winter. I'm seeing the benefit in the winter because obviously I'm not getting a lot at all now and it's quite disappointing. I need an extra battery, but we'll come back to that. But um, it's a little bit disappointing. But I could play, I could play a different game in the summer. What if I kept the same game going? So in the summer, when there's lots of solar generation everywhere, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden I think, oh, I'm going to have a little game here. I'm going to set it quite low on my Agile tab, maybe a couple of pence, yeah. and I'm going to hopefully get up in the morning and have 
my two batteries, you notice I did that again, my two batteries fully charged, and then I'm gonna hope it's gonna be blistering, yeah. and I'm gonna export that in the day, and that could well mean that I've beat the, the price I've paid in, I'm getting paid back. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not worried about charging 10 kilowatts and hoping the sun's in the back of the garden for long enough to get them fully charged. Yeah. I'm going to play the reverse game. I quite like that game, actually. That's probably yeah. more appealing than summer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To get up in the morning knowing you're already winning because you've set it at a, a really low price. It's a good start to the day. Yeah, it is a good start to the day. And then just think, how much can I explore? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is that is that an option, Griff, or have I just dreamt that one up? Because no, I'm looking no, no, at you and thinking... Right. I think there's a, there's a, for everybody, there's a, there's a level of can you be bothered? There's a level of risk. There's a level of what do you actually want from that battery system? Do you want a guaranteed week by week return? Go for a fixed unit price mm -hmm. on your import and your export. Yeah. Do you want to look at doing that export, which might pay you 40, 50 pence? I know that some companies last year when there was an energy event, i.e. that the grid was really point. stressed, you wouldn't do. You've been to events like that before and you're asked to leave. That <laughs> um, they were paying up to £2.50 per kilowatt hour wow. to force discharge people's batteries. And that's happened up to the last two winters. Right. Um, but again, it's, it's what approach you want to take. Where do you want to enter that? Do you want to be looking at that? And sometimes it's about having to explain it to the customer as well. Um, a lot of this can be really complicated for the customer, especially when they're a bit analog. Yeah. So do they just go in at the baseline <laughs> and hope for another battery and go, I'm just going to try this on an off-peak thing and see what happens? Yeah. Uh, but I think I'm pretty typical. I mean, I've never, ever changed energy provider in the entire time I've had an energy provider. And what's your unit rate? I, I'm, I'm on, I've always been on the whatever the tariff is thing they do now. So that's all I've ever had. I've never, ever tried to get it cheap or anything. I just go, I'm just going to pay that. And my wife's on tonight, if she's on, she said she won't get back from work in time. But she, but she said to me, yeah, 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 she said to me, she said, <laughs> we're not changing energy tariffs, are we? Because I'll be at work and you'll be ringing me saying, it's £1.50, whatever you got on in the electricity, turn it off. And she can see that coming if you know what I mean. But again, it's making sure you've stacked the cards in your corner by having either enough battery to provide the energy for your property yeah. and control the price of them charging batteries up. And this is education, I think the electricians, hopefully through courses that you do yeah. and stuff that we provide, that they can give those people another option, mm -hmm. especially those people a bit like myself that are a bit, you know, I'm a three-story house as well. I didn't tell my installer that until he arrived. You know, I gave him all those surprises. It's like 50 degrees pitch and all those, you know, so I knew mine was a little bit challenging. But again, you know, as an electrician wanting to sell a product in, you know, let's leave that bit out. Maybe give it as a, a, another option. I mean, at one stage for you, it's going to be really confusing, isn't it? Because since you've had your system installed, you've been going around switching stuff off. Yes. Now, if you go on to one of these nifty oh, no. tariffs, <laughs> your family's going to be so confused because you're going to come home and say, switch that on, quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, quick. He already does Get it. the oven on. Oh, we already, we already berates them. I don't care. Get in the, the shower oven on. now. He does it. <laughs> Can you no. imagine that? You're getting paid £2 a kilowatt hour. He's turning your ovens on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my kids would be so silly. They'll turn the gas on as well. It's like, we turned everything on, guys. <laughs> yeah. You know heat pump? No, no, no. no. Uh, yeah, I'm well, getting there. I'm getting there. There's, there's, I'll just about, there's loads of questions coming in on things like G99, fit and batteries and volt drop and bigger cables, Airedale Springs, Paul just mentioned uh, there. We've, we've had a look at Airedale Springs, so we will get back to it, but that brings us on to, uh, we'll, we'll mop up some of those more technical ones as we go on. Right. There's quite a bit on there, but we'll look at bigger batteries, actually, because <laughs> we were down at solar and storage last week, and you're 10 kilowatts, Gary, it's nothing. He's, he's only got five. Because we had a look at, so if everyone's seen the video that went out, this is a, a megawatt battery. Um, so where would I put this? On the drive, or am I got to make a little space in the garden? Let's have a look at what I've We've got another picture of one of Joe. Let's have a look. Yeah. So it comes in three different sizes. Okay. So the, the megawatt being that's so the megawatt's the big one, Gary. Okay, so, so, so that's the one I'll get. That go, that's driveway, that's replacing the garden shed, and that's just down by where you keep the bikes. Is that the idea going from the right to the left? Is yeah, that that's it? it? And mobile seems a bit of an odd word there. That don't look like you can get a pallet truck under one end and move it anywhere with your mate on the other end, does it? So two pallet trucks is all Okay, right. right. Yeah. So we're doing one one megawatt. What's the small one? Uh, that's the uh, 200, 200 kilowatt hour, middle one is 0.5, it's okay. half a megawatt, and then we've got the 24 megawatt beast. Yeah. Okay, it seems ridiculous though, doesn't it? What would we want that for? Yeah, but they're fully self-contained, batteries in there, yeah. inverters in there, but primarily for inverting batteries and charging batteries, not necessarily solar, but you, yeah. you, you could connect solar. And they're fully air conditioning, they've got fire, they're great. They've even got, Gary, a security system in there. I bet they have. I think, did you? You must have. <laughs> <laughs> I bet they have. Yeah. Okay. 
That, they look pricey. Uh, the, is it going to cost me a few quid? What, megawatt? What, to an half a million? No, you know, less than that. So the, the price of what the, the one megawatt unit will go out uh, at is... You're not selling me one, by the way. So the, so the, <laughs> you can be straight to the point. I know you still have to one <laughs> one five kilowatt for your house. So the, the one megawatt, it's going to go out uh, to the end customer at less than 500 grand. Um, so, um, and, you know... Quite, quite, quite a bit less. Um, so in between, I don't want to talk prices because I'll. We did a show <laughs> special. <laughs> when we're down there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, there was a figure quoted uh, on the show special. Well, so this watch the video for the show <laughs> special. So, 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 a hefty investment. So, Gordon, you're going to have to tell me where I'm going to have to because we know it's not going on a driveway or in a garden. Where's it going? Where are we going to put a megawatt of, of energy? Well, it solves a lot of problems, doesn't it? So the first one is obviously some wind turbines behind there, isn't it? Yeah. So obviously... They look a whiff of AI. <laughs> excess power. You know, you step up a level. The more solar you've got, the more wind you've got. You don't want to give it away at the cheapest price, do you? Mm -hmm. it's, it's advantageous to hold your power back and drop it into the network when you ah, need it. Right. So that would be the supply authorities in our country would, would say, we've got a load of excess energy here. We're going to hold on to it. No, 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 independent producers. Right, okay, so an independent. It could be anybody, really. But that's the first problem, isn't it? You don't want to, they don't want to give that energy away for free. Yeah. Well, I hope, no, okay. So, so you're saying on that larger scale that they wouldn't get paid to return that energy. They want to keep it because, like us, at home, 35p a kilowatt hour or whatever their equivalent is as a business rate, the more energy they can keep, the more they can thin their bin bills out. Is that what you're saying? That's the first problem. Okay. Then there's the amount of power you can export or import to a supply, and it's a lot of installations are grid constrained. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> so and when you go over certain levels of import, there's a penalty per kilowatt hour in a commercial installation, which we never see in the domestic world. But you might have an installation that's limited to X kilowatt. And if you go X plus one, suddenly your tariff increases by three, four, five, twenty fold. Oh, right. um, okay. And that's called yeah. peak load shaving. So yeah. you, you want to just cut that out so you don't get that. It happens a lot in heavy usages like hospital environments and things like that. So to, to make it not easy for people, so I'm allowed to have, let's make it easy, a kilowatt. Okay, that's all I'm allowed. If I go over a kilowatt and I don't put so another hundred watts over the top, yep. I get penalised for that. It's a bit Correct. like the old um, when we had um, lagging Cortinas. power factor correction and stuff like that. What was this? <laughs> Cortinas. 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 No, no, no. Yeah. Come on, let's get. So when power factor, when you you had, yeah. you started dragging it to you know to right. lagging, yep. you, the siren went off. We turned off stuff. So similar yep. sort of thing is you're penalised for drawing too much energy. Yep. And this system would help us solve it. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. I understand. I'm back in the room. Okay. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. So you have a maximum demand. Yeah. From the grid. Yeah. yeah. And okay. then obviously industrial consumers are heavily penalised for taking power at the wrong time of day as well. Okay. That might be factored into the agreement. Right. So they don't. You know things like a, yeah. Yeah. You don't take it during those peak hours when everyone wants to be at home cooking a tea. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So again, but your business still runs at that time. How are you going to service your own energy yeah. needs? Yeah. Okay. So again, you can trickle charge your battery off peak or during those cheap rate hours, yep. and then deploy that energy storage instead of taking it from the grid to avoid peak time charges. I think okay. the most, uh, you know, the, the applications that we see is the power redundancy piece. So you might have hospitals who at the moment have got big diesel or petrol generators as redundancy power where they're being serviced you know, once, twice a year. Um, so redundancy power, but there's a, there's a big piece in um, the companies and the businesses that are grid restricted so you know, during the day, they're they're at the cap. They're hitting the limit on what they uh, what they can bring in from the grid, and they now want to install EV chargers, but they've not got any headroom to do that. Ah. With this solution, um, we can charge the containerized storage uh, batteries off peak when the load is less than in the day, and then the EV chargers can be powered from the containerized solution. Um, so it's keeping them under that cap, but it's giving them scope to to tick the boxes that they need to tick for, mm. for EV. And, and this is trying to hold the grid up, is it? No, it's not the grid's going to fall over. No. It's just, just yeah. uh, you, they're capped. So I take it the windings on the transformer, you know, can only have, you know, everyone's got to have a share of this electricity. Yeah. Yeah. And if you've gone and got greedy, yeah. okay, then there's going to be an issue and this solves the problem. Yeah. And I think moving forward as well, I think we'll see more sort of DSR agreements, demand side response, where there's the days when, as we spoke about before, where there's overproduction, um, whether, you know, people having a large amounts of commercial storage can help absorb some of that excess and, um, you know, the cheaper rates. 
And again, even with commercial tariffs, there's commercial tariffs out there where you do get a cheaper rate off peak. Mm. Um, yeah. and, and the term you just used there is one that a lot of people might not be familiar with, the DSO. Yeah. Um, so we, we, all, we, we know there was DNOs, right? Distribution network yeah. operators. And DSOs are now, or they're all rebranding, renaming to DSOs, which is distributed systems operators, because now we're talking about energy flow coming both ways in and out of that, that point of use that we've always had historically. We've got storage, we've got EV, we've got solar PV, et cetera. So now it's about that two-way flow of energy. Yeah. Yeah, but the cynics out there, and maybe not the electricians watching this, but the cynics out there say, well, we'll just in increase the grid. We'll just make the grid bigger. We'll just put in bigger cables. We'll do, we'll just imp if we improve the grid, then we won't have to do all of these other solutions. Is that even an option? Well, let's have a look at the pictures, you know, grid upgrades. Here's the one. This is one that they've worked on the ME. They've just done some undergrounding. It took them six months. <laughs> it's been, it's been the slowest process you've ever seen. You can't rush quality though. Can you, you can't rush quality. And, and I, I think I've, <laughs> Got a, I managed to pick up just for you actually. I managed to pick up a little bit of a little bit of offcut cable there from from when we were doing it there. So that's the. Uh, just leave it away from Lee. Yeah, <laughs> it's aluminium, Lee. You're all right. It's going in the bin now. And again, when you no, 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 there's it's, another one, John. Like it was twisted pair as well. Was that to keep the uh, harmonics down? Is it? Look, got twisted pair. There's another picture, John. I think there should be one. Yeah, this is the sort of. Is that near this you? This is expensive stuff. It doesn't look expensive. There's a bit of concrete in doing it, but the planning, the time it takes, you've got to work back where do those cables go to. They're not going to upgrade those cables. And, and what about the losses? What, what are the transmission losses? We, we've got all these power stations operating all over the country. The transmission losses across the country are roughly... 50%. Oh. I was looking for some inspiration there. <laughs> um, so if we can localise that, that power generation, uh, as in having solar PV and embedded generators locally, that means that the losses are going to be significantly less. Yeah, and we see more and more with a lot of the big commercial PV installs now where they're getting put on G100, where there's strict no export um, regulations. So, you know, having this sort of commercialised battery storage where they can, because they're not allowed to export, they've got that battery storage. And it's, it's weird saying it with our containerised storage solutions, but they're pretty much plug and play, um, you know, once they're delivered to site. It's a big plug though, right? It's a big plug. It's <laughs> a big plug. And a lot of play. Mm. Could, you, could you wind that plug in? Oh, I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't trust Jimmy or me to do it. No, 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 no. He's trying to record him, yeah, yeah, yeah. I could do it in six minutes. Six minutes. <laughs> Eventually. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so the solutions are there already. So people say to us all the time at shows and that, and we, especially in our EV days when we were going around there, the grid can't cope. If we all, we all got an EV tomorrow, the grid wouldn't cope. It looks like the solutions are there before the problem's turned up. Uh, am I right in thinking that? Uh, well, they know it's coming. Right? So, I mean, the DSO, I've got a picture. There's a northern power grid one here. The, the DSOs have already worked out where this is going. Okay. So, so the yeah. one here. So the, this is an online tool. This is for us in Skipton here. I boiled it down for our local electricians. So Northern Power Grid have mapped out by uh, council area, by substation level, how much storage is on the network at the minute and where it's going. So this is Craven, where we are. Yep. Bear in mind, Skipton, we've got one town and then we've got another town at the top of our area in the map. So not a big area. At the minute, there's a you know way less than uh, a megawatt. So yeah, 169 kilowatts of storage in the area. Oh, there was uh, so that's what last year. Current, so the ability to store energy is nothing. It's so nothing. Good. Okay, but it's a yeah. tiny area though. It's a tiny area. Okay, so yeah. so they're mapping this out to say, tell us what then. Uh, well, they've got to plan their investment in the network, where people are going to put storage, where people are going to have solar, where the EVs, where the heat pumps go on. So then, okay. if we boil up the next slide, Joe, this is where it's gone in by 2040. Seven megawatts in this area. Seven containers. I could, I could, I could fix that in six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> We've got some sales yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah, so, uh, Do you want me to make the connections for you, though? Yeah. 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 Griff will throw a bit of training. Good rate. Yeah, 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 yeah. And if you can come and do the race wall as well, so we'll all get a touch. So, wow, OK. So well, you're right, that could be in your hospital. That could yeah, be one at the hospital. Yeah. It could be dotted in a local substation. It could be, it could be the one we're going to put in here. Yeah, yeah, and we know it's incredibly difficult around here because... Getting a, a commercial EV charging is really difficult, isn't it? Because we've obviously got a hire station down here, I and mean, he can't put one in, can he? Yeah. Can't put a decent enough 
because the, the, it's full, isn't it? The actual yeah. the, the transformer is full. Yeah. So the solution is local storage. A little bit of storage. And James's yeah. eyes lit up there. If you could give him the name of that higher station, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can see a, see a 200 kilowatt hour. Find the hospital straight away. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So. But it's a great opportunity, isn't it, for the, the viewers out there? You know, everyone knows, yeah, someone who's a, a car dealership Definitely. or a hospital or it's anywhere where it has a generator today. Yeah, because, you know, a lot of people's domestic properties now, people are using EV chargers with low balancing mm. because, you know, let's say someone's got an 80 amp main incomer out of the house, you know, if they're using a 32 amp charger, it's the same problem with business, with commercial as it is with residential. It's people are, are at that limit, so. Yeah, didn't think of that one. That's good. Yeah, sort of, yeah, sort in your own turn. Opportunity, opportunity, I would suggest. Okay, you just, again, like we said, if you're not interested in getting on that roof, you don't have to. Yeah. The, the, the opportunity is there. And I think, again, a compelling story to the client, whether that be commercial, industrial, or domestic person, a compelling story and understanding what they can do and benefit their business. You, you know, it won't take a lot of investment in yourself, will it, to get that knowledge? And all of a sudden, it's about the person that told me about this that can give you the solution, wins yeah. the job, in it. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I think there's a, a cracking opportunity here. Any more slides to accompany that? No, group? no. When people are in on data centres and all sorts, I think. I mean, we've, we've, we've done uh, we've done 50 minutes already. Okay. So it's, it's actually, where's Rick today, Joe? Actually, we've, uh, he's back in, so he must have just finished his part-time job. Ah, oh. he's on a pizza course this week. <laughs> Obviously, Rick's trying to expand his horizons. He's had enough of the electrical industry, so he's uh, his nighttime. Uh, catering course this week he's batching up some uh, look like uh, hand stretch pizzas there yeah he's, he, he does like his food he's probably in a better sector maybe than electrical he loves a bit of electrical but we know Rick loves a little bit of food doesn't he so yeah. I think he's uh, yeah. Yeah, but he has also been out with you this week didn't he had a look, visit down to Rick's Gran <laughs> uh, what? so it's Rick's he calls her Granny or Nanny or whatever it is it's his, his wife's Nan yeah. okay what a lovely lady I know she she was a, a considerable age, so mm -hmm. well into her 80s, as sprightly as you couldn't believe, okay? In the garage, there was a few fizzy-like beverages that she enjoys drinking. Mm -hmm. By all accounts, she's very good at it as well, as Rick's got a couple of classic stories of not keeping <laughs> up with Nana. Okay, so that might have to... <laughs> and Rick's back, we'll have to have a discussion about that. What a lovely lady. We went and did her, we did her a bit of a favour, but she did us a favour, and uh, it got us a wonderful Rick's tool time. Shall we have a look what he was up to? Rick's tool time. Hello and welcome to Rick's Tool Time. Again, it's another glorious day, but we're not here for that. Let's take a look at this Kita workbench. So here we have it, the foldable workbench. Incredibly easy to set up. I just pop that there. If I just hold on to the sides, press these two tabs, that drops out. So that allows me to pop everything on the work surface, meaning it's not going to get wet on the floor. I'm not having to bend over to get into that box to get my screws and my plugs out. So let's run through some of these features. You're probably thinking, well, it opened up easily enough. Is it going to close easily enough? Yes, it will. However, if we just pop this in like so. If I pull that tight on the top here, it will show you that it's locked into position. So now that we've got it in locked in place, we can have use it as a workbench as is, but let's say we want to cut something on here. So we've got a bit of tray, a bit of trunking. We need to lock it into place. We've got some adjustable G clamps, which are nicely fitted into the bottom here. So with the G clamp, we can adjust the head this way. Once that's in, we can slide it into the bench up there and then closely into here, which locks that into position. So we've got a second one around this other side here. And again, if we just repeat what we did on the first one, let's just adjust that one ever so slightly, pop that in, slide that on there, squeeze the handle, and then there we go. I just pop that into there. A nice little feature with these clamps is the fact that this slides. So imagine that that was open fully and we started to clamp these away. By the time you got to this section, let's say, once it was clamped in, you're going to have this stabbing you in the leg or in your groinal area. But with this one, if I just push that one back, if I were to just pull that little trigger in there, slide it up here, let's say my material's that wide, clamp that in, and as you can see there, it's not sticking out so much, is it? Also, just to mention with this, the way that you lock it into this bench, let's say, is if we squeeze this handle and up, when the handle is open, 
it actually locks it into the bench. So if I squeeze that, slide it into the slot there, release the handle, it ain't coming back out. So today we're only going to use the workbench so we don't actually need the clamps. So let's remove them. And again, as you saw earlier where I removed them from, I can just pop them both back in there. Take that one out of there. Stick it under there for now. I pop the bag, a few tools, and maybe even some screws and washers to save my back. Now I've run through a few features on the workbench, I've got to fit these Laseco Essence floodlights. So let me know, is it great or is it a gimmick? Get your votes in, but till then, I'll see you on the flip side. ta -da. Absolutely soaking wet. Can't believe it. Thanks to old time. There he is. He's got a little <laughs> sneaky piece. Need to look at him. Fantastic. I think I think everybody can appreciate the, the effort that uh, Rick goes into Rick's tool time. But for me, that was possibly the best one he's ever done. But I am stalling for time a little bit early because above your head is the tool that needs to be summoned down. And you, I can tell by the side grin you've given me there is that this is going to be the highlight maybe, not just of this evening, maybe the entire year. Okay. So, well, let's ask the audience what they think as well, Gary. Is it good or gimmick? Get your things in. Do you think it's, yeah, put in the word good or gimmick? Now, interestingly, Ross Sands is on, and I think we actually spotted Ross had one of these first. Did we? Yeah, that's when Rick latched onto it. We, we bought did that it. Anderson EV install. We bought it from a well-known uh, retailer that offers click and collect service. That's oh, where right. we got our one. Who from. happen to be open on Sundays as well. They do, and they now <laughs> yeah. deliver within right. maybe an hour or less sometimes. Okay, right. so yeah, so um, that's where we got our one from. And mm. I, I think for what we paid for it, and there wasn't a lot of money, yeah. It just seemed to do what it suggested, but I'm not trying to not trying to influence any people's great or gimmick. Yeah, oh, half and half. Was it going over the shock you paid for something, Gary? Yes, um, <laughs> Gordon was on holiday, and oh, right, Rick was a bit like me in that battery. <laughs> all he did, all week, was go on about it. Got to about Thursday, I said, "Shall we go and get it?" Oh, we have him one, are we? It was You're not getting delivered. No, no, no. We went and picked it up. Uh, Got us out, didn't he? He was on holiday. So <laughs> yeah, easy. yeah. Easy, Pizza, easy, yeah. bite to eat, pick up a tool yeah, bench. Drop, yeah, drop it in there. How much was it? I, I, I want to say something like 89 quid. Yeah. It weren't a lot of money. Yeah. It weren't a lot of money. Does that include the groinal area clamp? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Additional <laughs> extra. Just, it's the groinal area. Yeah, I do like that. So, yeah. yeah, it was good. Yeah. I mean, people, people like it by the looks of it here. Yeah. Yeah. But that means nothing because the final decision, Lee, for the embarrassment of joining me on your hands and knees will be yours. Okay, but to yep. do that, we're going to need to get on hands and knees. Are you going to be able to use the, the button for I'll me? Be, I'll be in control. Okay, <laughs> that sounds fantastic. <laughs> yeah, that's a bit that's of a worry. Oh, that's, be let's give ourselves a little bit of room here, Lee. So, uh, no oh, practice if it is... wired up well. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> I wired that, actually. There's a story, a story there. there. Well, there. It was painful. So, so just, just to remind you, okay, because you haven't watched many of these before. or no. Sorry, so I said many. I almost got it right. Any of these before. <laughs> okay, so we're going to need to hold a Hands up in the air. We need to courage it down with the following phrase. Okay. Yeah, it's, 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 oh, it's, 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 it's what? Yeah. It's, yeah, not there. We're not. There, like, we're there. We're staggered. Okay. And we're going to go. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine we're people at work. They're going to record this bit, All snip good. it out. Yeah. It's going to be on your Christmas card. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Hands up then. And you're ready. And give us one go. Really? That is probably the worst <laughs> minute. I didn't go with you then, did I? No, you left no, me hanging there. Yeah. yeah, did you do a bit of quiring I during the day? Were you there in your white, uh, white full outfit oh, in, the, in the day back in there? I suppose it's easier way to get the lid off the roof. Here we go then. So here we go. Ready? Together. We'll do this one together. Ready? Do 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 Yes. We looked a right oh. one, didn't we? Right, here we go. So take that, hold that, and we'll send it back up. If you can send it back up for me, Jimmy. Here we go. So talk me through what the... Uh... Yes, so I'll talk you through this. We'll have to wait for the loud noise to go up. Okay, so we've got rid of the loud noise. So what we've got here is the tool wall. Okay, we've got the tool from above. We've got the tool wall. We have, okay, we have uh, normally, normally positioned down here in the bottom. You don't need to look with the camera because you can't see it down. Bottom <laughs> left-hand corner down here, we have the Makita coffee maker, oh. which doesn't make two cups of coffee in 15 minutes, which is traditionally the same length that it takes to have a coffee break on a construction site. So you wouldn't be able to make one for you and your friend. And then what 
we do is we, we go from the bottom left hand corner to the top right hand corner where this is number 11. Okay. So this is the best thing since sliced bread, okay? Wow. Right up here in this top corner. Now, if I look above right up here in the top corner, we can clearly see somebody is positioned at 11 and a half, the coffee maker, and I'm gonna try and get that down. <laughs> Oh, oh wow, well, that was all right, eh? That's the first hey? time I've seen that. You're welcome. Yeah, okay. I used to own, I used to have the record for the high jump when I was at school. I was quite the athlete back in the day. Now I've only got his foot. <laughs> okay, so we're going to position that one down here. Okay, so this is sort of six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay. okay, and we sort of work our way across the board. It's your choice. Don't be influenced by anything else. Okay, put okay. it where you think it goes. Ooh. So I'm going to go. Above average. Okay, so that's about a six and a half, do you reckon? Yeah, six and a half to a seven. Okay, all right, that's good. Your choice, so thank you very much for that. So what did the audience think? They all thought it was good. Yeah. Yeah. I thought, I thought for what we paid for it, and we did pay for it, I thought it was all right. <laughs> Someone said there's bound to be one in Costco. Zuri Electrical should have gone to Costco. I didn't know they had them in Costco. I was in there the other day. Obviously, I didn't come out with too much random stuff. Can you just tell me the name of that person again? What was his name there? Zuri, you said. Zuri Electrical. Because I got corrected by the great Joe Robinson that I said it wrong. Why? What should it be? Well, I don't know. He said some other name. He said, I've got it wrong. It was some sort of colour or something. Or... Yeah, right. Yeah. So he corrected me. Right. On national telly, we've done him again. Yeah. He'll oh, be well, ringing me up later on. Yeah. You. Oh, oh, well, Gary, I've had to correct yeah. myself again. Hopefully, he's on this evening. All right, a trip to Costco. Are you a Costco person? Um, no. no. I, I used to go in yeah. quite a bit. Uh, but I found myself breathing in more and more, um, so I've uh, stopped going to Costco. I'm trying to eat a little bit healthier. <laughs> <laughs> I don't go to Costco's. I just look like it's natural. It's a natural look, naturally athletic. Okay, Costco's. Of course. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 I used to go for all the freebies before they stopped them. You know, with COVID. No, they're back now. They're back. Yeah, I was in there on Sunday. You're not Sunday talking about face. things on cocktail sticks. You don't walk around there trying to get a full meal, do you? <laughs> <laughs> you do, oh, dear yeah. me. Yeah. And walk out wow. with the cookies. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it goes in through the window. That's what he's saying. Well, I said they have <laughs> got them in. Well, people, they have got them in Costco. Be oh, interesting right. to know what the Costco price well, is. Next time you have a look. I will do. Oh, or some or of the some, random yeah. stuff. Yeah. Came yeah. out with a canoe once. <laughs> <laughs> what did you go in for? Toilet roll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me. Okay. Meanwhile, back at the solar install that isn't solar install, it's fully battery. Okay, so that's good. So we got. I think we got a new product, haven't we? Something got a little sneaky. We, well, we, 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 <laughs> let, we let it out a bit early. You went full sale pitch early on didn't you with that one yeah. we've got, what is it called just give me the name again uh, Lifelink in, Life, the, in the UK in the Lifelink. UK okay yeah. it's been out in South, South Africa. Africa yeah okay where they're Describe the uh, power network system out in South Africa. Someone's already on said it's rubbish. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you described it, it's a bit like? Uh, popcorn yeah. uh, I think was one phrase I used um, but yeah in South Africa you, you, you're not allowed to export to the grid no. because the grid isn't stable enough. And um, you probably have five or six power cuts a day. Is that something? Yeah. So in South Africa, you know, in the UK, we traditionally have a schedule of when we might put our bins out each week. Um, in South Africa, they have a daily schedule of when they have no power. So okay. mm. they, they call it load shedding. It's between one and eight hours, and that's every day. So mm. in South Africa, if you've not got PV and a battery or a massive generator in your back garden. Uh, you need a lot of candles. Yeah. And, yep, David Marshall, cross on Facebook, who's just back from South Africa, yeah. has just basically said that, yeah, they have big problems with uh, yeah, massive load shedding yeah. and big houses have batteries. Yeah. Okay, and that's what we're trying to get. So let, let's, let's break, are we, no, go on in. No, no, well, you met up with Keith oh, down at Solid Sun. Now, if you don't know anyone who doesn't know Keith, Sunsync have got a YouTube channel. Yeah. And it's uh, Keith, Keith's a, a legend himself on, yeah. on there, isn't he? Yeah. Very passionate, I would say, yeah. about, uh, about the whole thing. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, he's definitely. probably the most passionate CEO uh, in the industry. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's good. And, and a character as well, I would like <laughs> yeah. to suggest for you said it. Yeah, he's an absolute guy. He's an absolute lovely bloke, and I've got to spend a few minutes with him. Uh, we cut out a lot of the stuff at the end because he carried on afterwards. But let's see what uh, the, the new life link looks like. Something a little bit different for episode three of Gary Goes Green. So I've been joined by Keith Goff, CEO of Sunsync. But I've got some questions from the actual people watching the videos, believe it or not. And they've said to me, Maybe when I've got the more separate inverter and battery in my plant room, you know, the room that I'm yep, sorry, yeah, yeah. a basin <laughs> and a toilet installed, maybe that look doesn't suit them. And I see behind me something that looks like a massive inverter. What's going on here? Oh, so it's a lot more than an inverter. It's an all-in-one unit. So this is an inverter, bi-directional inverter, with a battery in one. So it makes life so easy to install. You don't have to open it up. Everything is plug and play. 
plugged in the bottom. And you can parallel it if you want another one. You put another whole system together, you can do, you can mix and match it. So you've got three different sizes. So you've got three, two and a half, a three and a half, a five and a half kilowatt. So three different sizes, you can mix, mix and match any of them. Okay, so when you say that, you're talking about the kilowatt hour rating of the batteries that are built inside of here. The whole thing. Whole thing's in there. Yep. So by doing that, I, I'm going to lose a lot of cables and There's switches. There's no cables, so all your switches, you've got your battery isolator, you've got your solar isolator, you've got your mains protection underneath there, look at your fuse. Um, you've got everything all in one, and everything just plugs in. You don't have to open it. It's just snap, 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 put it on the wall, jobs are good, and you don't have to do anything else. It's all in one. So this is probably maybe looking at those people where it's going to be more on show. Obviously, not everyone's yeah. got a plant room and it's obviously visual. There's nothing that's not appealing about this. It reminds me in some ways of maybe a storage heater. If I yeah. turn it around the other way, that looks like a storage heater. And we used to have one of those in every room. Yeah. And then I'm thinking about maybe the new build. Yeah. So where they're obviously going to be put down the solar panel route. This is, this is going to be great. Isn't it? You can sit in the loft. It's so easy. to, But it's the speed of installation. So with the traditional, maybe take you several hours. Really, my idea, and, I, and, and probably everyone says because the comments is no, it's not. But I reckon you could fit it in an hour. All right, <laughs> it's, it's, some of your guys could do it. <laughs> it's not a race, Keith. And when I'm thinking about the system, if I'm all in one, obviously we're just, we're saving lots of other things. And when we're thinking about saving, not just energy, money, money, because we're fitting less stuff. It's yeah, and the product is cheap in comparison. So value engineered, like as that. I always told, value engineered. But it is. It's a really, really well built piece of kit. It's beautiful. If you open it up. Okay, it's not meant to be opened up, it's sealed. But if, you open, if I show you inside one of them, you'll see how well it's engineered. And it is plug and play. It's really simple to use. Okay. Um, it's got it, and you know, and the price you know, compared to a battery inverter, protection gear separate, of course, is much cheaper. Okay, and when we say, Jeep, we don't like to talk about price on eFix Energy or eFix, but we'll leave some links in the description. You go over and discover how fantastic this value is. <laughs> this system here. Thank you ever so much. Thank Jeff. you. Jeff, and thank one thing I have to say, it's not raining. <laughs> the sun is shining, we're all winning, I bet my app's winning. Have I shown you my app? Shall I show you my app? I've got an app on this, it's really good, and you can see how much energy you've produced. I've filled my battery today, believe it or not. So that's my solar array, that's it, that's what's coming 98%. in. 98%. And, and it's, my family's just come home, you can just see a little bit of increase. <laughs> I was hovering around 185, because in the other video I showed how to reduce my parasitic loads. Value engineered. Love it. <laughs> he eventually corrected himself. I left it in there. It's worth checking it out. I mean, we don't do price, okay? We never do it, have we? But again, go and check it out. I haven't put it in the link in this video. That's going out on uh, eFix Energy as episode three. Mm -hmm. And we will put some links in there. It'll be a first time for eFix. In, yeah, I, I personally think it's incredible value. You, yeah. you can't set a price either. I know you can't. It's, it's, yeah, it's a great piece of kit. It's, you know, it's... Um, Cheap <laughs> for, for, for what it is. Value engineering. It is. <laughs> Value engineering. Um, but it's the same quality that people expect from Sunsync. You know, everything's in one box. But as Keith said, you know, you're not paying for all the, the the extra the cabling or isolation. It's all in. It's in one box. So it's it's nice and easy. All the connections connections underneath are push fit. So it takes. So, so I mean, if people are asking, I'm I'm looking at it and I'm going. I'd usually have to buy an inverter and I'd have to buy a battery. So whatever, it's gonna be cheaper than those two if you buy, buy them separately. And then when you buy them separately, as we know, we've got to put all the isolators in, the cables and yeah. the connectors and everything else. Yeah. Yeah. So Not all of them though. Don't go back on what you said before. <laughs> when we've got all of them. You've got to dream up ones that you think you've got to have in Sometimes there. Sometimes you've got to put extra ones in. just <laughs> That just you don't to, need. Just to yeah. think you're being compliant, yes. Yes, okay. Yeah. It, yeah, looks great. And uh, yeah, again, it's brand new, isn't it? So yeah. people are thinking, why did my plant room not have one? Because my plant room can accommodate two batteries and an inverter. Yeah. So, uh, How many yeah, batteries have you got? One at the minute. One. So the, the gap by the side of it's for the next one. Okay, it's coming soon, I hear. But yeah, you can see why they can they can be slipped into a kitchen. Yeah, yeah just slipped in there. You wouldn't notice it. And I said, I use the, the analogy of a storage heater, but that's about right, isn't it? We're used to seeing you know, gas boilers, etc. We used to see in one white box somewhere located or in each room for storage eaters. Mm. That's non offensive. Yeah, a few people have asked that, can you add multiple ones to the same system? Yeah, so you can you can add you can connect the uh, the life links in parallel. Uh, and the, the one of the other great features is obviously it's an all in one unit, so you've got the inverter and the battery in a contained unit. But if someone does want to expand the battery storage, they can use our standard standalone batteries that we have now. Um, You've just got one. Um, you can uh, you can use our standard batteries, and they can be connected into the all-in-one unit to increase the, the battery storage. So yeah, still 
still scalable. Um, yeah. Yeah, so plug and play, and, and that's why, yeah, just as your system grows. Or you might be exactly the same as me. You get one of those, and then all of a sudden you start doing a bit of, you want more energy, you're going to buy it in, and all the yeah. rest of it. Yeah, you're off, you're off and running. And it can be used without solar, it can just be used again as yeah, a standalone just, battery yeah, system. Just uses an AC couple, you know, charging from the grid at the off peak, yeah. uh, off peak rate. So, and it, it really is plug and play. So, you know, the AC connector for the grid connection is in the box. So, you terminate your grid line into that, click it in. In, in an hour, I've heard. Well, I in an hour. Yeah, yeah. I, I could probably do it in an hour, five minutes. And yeah. Five minutes. Maybe we need to put it on the electrician's uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, perhaps that'll be the new one. You can imagine that. Yeah. Can you fit this in under an hour? It's outrageous if you're over an hour. You call yourself an electrician. It, 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 you know, you do training. I'm sure you don't yeah. teach anyone to be fast. You just teach them to do it correctly. Yeah. High quality. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that's what we're paying for, aren't we? In this, this sector especially, I would suggest it is about quality. I mean, it's going to be a lot more expensive than two new downlights and three white plastic sockets. Mm -hmm. People expect a level of installation based on what they're paying but, as well. But who'd have thought we'd have been filling our houses with downlights? I, you know, only, only 20, 25 years ago, Ooh. we we just had a, yeah. a little lamp in the middle of the room. The big that, lights. Uh, a big light. Put the big light on. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> Strip light in the kitchen, now. Yeah. 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 Get that yeah. dum 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 as it's trying to get itself. Started. So uh, so yeah, I think there's that normalisation. What you know, uh, 15 years ago, you drove down the street, and if you saw solar on the roof, that was strange. You stopped, you looked, you wondered what it was. There's now about one and a half million systems installed and we don't think anything of it. And it's almost become the new normal. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of this technology as it evolves will become the new normal for, for lots of reasons, not release the, the issues we have with the wider grid connectivity um, for, for a lot of things we're wanting to do, like EV, like heat pumps. Yeah. It's, it's interesting because... You, know, you do drive down the road, and I do it, and I'm sure other people do, especially in the electrical industry, and look at how many roofs, and it seems a lot. But count the amount that haven't got it. Yeah. They're all opportunities. Now, there might be opportunities we can't see, because they might yeah. only have a battery system, but we're looking at the, the few still. It feels like one and a half million people in my town have got it, but that's not the case, is it? Because it's no, we, did a, we did a survey in the better part of Skipton, just as a quick one for a video we're making, and I'd say it's about 5% if you're lucky. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what the real... There's any, that's my unofficial walking down the street survey. No. Yeah, so no. You're all right in sales. <laughs> You're all right for a bit. Yeah. I'm just concentrating on my seven megawatt plant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so plenty of opportunities, what we'd say. Yeah, plenty yeah. of opportunity there. Yeah, even people with older systems to add batteries in and stuff like that. Yeah, there's plenty of opportunities. A lot of people have said to us, didn't they? Oh, they feel like they've missed the opportunity. Or I missed the one for, for EV. I feel like I've missed the one for solar. Ain't even started yet. No. Hasn't even started. Yeah. No. Mm. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's all good. So, that was good to catch up with Keith as well. He should have been here today, shouldn't he? We said before, where is he? Somewhere nice, is he? Somewhere where it's not raining. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, someone spotted that in the comments. Is that a Keith thing, is it, about the rain, is it? Yeah, normally when Keith does a video, it's raining. Uh, so, the, the rain follows him round. I think if Keith was on a sunbed, it'd probably be raining. Well, well he's in Tenerife, so I hope he's absolutely hammering down. <laughs> Who would have their call centre anywhere? You'd have it in Tenerife when yeah. he's out there, no doubt, keeping up to... Are you keeping him up to speed with the latest things in a call centre in yeah, Tenerife? Yeah. How lovely. I think he's in. I think he's in. Oh, I think okay. battery can be, yeah, he's in there. Battery can be unplugged. Like another battery inside Keith. there, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can it be installed outside for the LifeLink? No. No, so it's an interior. Yeah, it? indoor. Um, Have you got systems that can be installed outside? Yeah, so all our standard range of hybrid inverters, so every single one that we do is IP65. Um, we we have two different batteries on our low voltage, so we have an IP65 model, uh, hopefully the one next to your toilet, uh, and we also have an IP21. So we yeah, we've got. Uh, outside. Does it need to be IP65 <laughs> next to your toilet? Uh? A, judge everybody on your own accuracy, here, yeah, folks. Yeah, it's, it's quite a large target, you know. When we get it, I'm never at home, so it won't make any difference to me. So uh, yeah, that's, uh, I I suspect mean, Paul Reynolds fitted some of these. He's saying it's good for off-grid sites. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Again, with our standard range of hybrid inverters, the LifeLink can be used off-grid. It's got that dedicated UPS low fault. Um, yeah. So yeah. a little bit more for us there. Off-grid. Give me a. Not connected to. I the understand grid, what Gary. that is. <laughs> <laughs> give me. Right. Give me a practical working example then. Where Canal are we? boats. Okay. Thank you very much. That's where we need to go. go. So yeah. yeah, that's what we said earlier, didn't we? Yeah. That, you know, you got that option for those systems to go on there. Site, site cabins as well. I spoke to somebody recently who specialises in providing generator backup or generator supplies to, to mobile work sites 
um, and they were talking about completely shifting away from diesel gensets yeah. mm. and just putting containerized storage. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. taking it back to the yard, charging it up, dropping it on site and providing the power for the site, totally silent and yeah. emissions free at the point of use. Yeah, even like, you know, garden outbuildings, if someone's got a decent sized garden, having a lifelink unit in there, um, you know, by the time you paid for the cost of having your SWA run out to, to your garden shed, um, he said he wasn't technical. <laughs> I just only said that <laughs> when I was doing well the challenge. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, you know, you could make your garden building completely off grid. You know, two or three panels on the roof with one of the lifelink units, um, and you'd, you've not got the expense of paying for the infrastructure to that garden building. Um, yeah, so it's but people, but those temporary supplies can be really expensive as well. Yeah. A temporary yeah. supply for a building site. It's like yeah. ransom money to get one of those in and, sometimes. Uh, yeah, temporary supply to the grid, but also yeah. the temporary generator supplies because mm -hmm. they've all got to be serviced, the oil's got to be disposed of, yeah. The, yeah. the machine's got to be taken out of service. So, yeah, really interesting stuff happening in, in that market. In the same way that if we scale it right back down to the small domestic market as well, when you have that instantaneous amount of power available, suddenly you might start to overcome some of those previous issues encountered with the grid saying, you can't connect this to the system. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that's jumping out at us now all the time is heat pumps, mm -hmm. where people are looking to increase the load on a domestic dwelling by maybe two or three kilowatts to accommodate a heat pump of a particular size, maybe right up to about six kilowatts or five or six kilowatts for a really large single phase heat pump. And now the grid are saying, well, we're not sure. We don't really want that on that particular area in that, uh, on, on our network. But how about now we start to think about coupling in um, something like the LifeLink to be able to give us that extra 3.6, 5 kilowatts of, of output and just wiring the heat pump straight through that. So now we're not taking that demand from the grid and we just trickle charge that gently away on a really nice agile tariff. <laughs> uh, so we're also benefiting from that. What did we see the rates were there? About 7.2 yeah, pence. Two pence. Yeah. So even on a really badly installed heat pump um, with a scop of three, efficiency of 300 percent we're going to be talking about something like 2.4 pence mm -hmm. per unit of energy delivered to the home which is about five times cheaper than natural gas mm -hmm. that's where your cost recovery can really start to come in and as the contractors the electrical contractors we're going to have to get a lot more involved in that sort of side of things when looking at people electrifying the heat in their their homes. It's, it's, it's some great bits in there. Mm -hmm. I mean, that section there just got me sitting there buzzing. A the, the standalone building just yeah. to give it, you know, a life link and a few panels. Yeah. It just, it, yeah, it's a solution that you wouldn't have even have thought about 15 minutes ago yeah. for me. But yeah. you know, a couple, you know, it wasn't even on the radar, was it, to yeah. actually make it stand on its own? And, and that's about. So let's imagine. You know, I, I, I might know the answer, but let's imagine I don't. So okay, just said. What happens when the battery's full and I haven't been to that standalone building and the sun's still beating down on the roof? What's happening to that energy then? So with solar, um, if the battery's full yep. and there's no export to the grid. No, because we're not connected to the grid. The solar production, just it just it dials back. So um, yeah, it's if the, it could be the sunniest day of the year. If the system's got a potential to generate three kilowatt, but the load inside that building is only 200 watts, yep. the PV will only generate 200 watts. Yep. Okay. Um, what they need to do, Gary, is go out and buy another air fryer. Second episode, I don't know if it's going out yet, do we? It's ready and ready we'll to go. Yeah, we'll yeah, put, we'll put it out. Okay. So go, you know, on the EFIX Energy, yeah, I go into those parasitic loads and I'll show you how I've changed my habits and stuff like that. It's going to be a good journey, this is. It's going to be a good journey. Yeah. Yeah. Go on to Agile, you're going to have to change it back, though. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> so I'll, you can I'll, use the, the ovens energy still there. I've got two <laughs> ovens. They're still they're primed and ready for two. Yeah, two ovens. But you've only got one battery. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you can imagine. The, the, uh, how, how I feel that I can cook, yeah, cook in two ovens with only one battery. If, if you put a life link in your shed, you could potentially power maybe you know three air fryers at once. Yeah, love it. Yeah. I so. like it. But no, again, coupled with because heat pumps coming next. We, yeah. we think this is the big thing. Heat pumps are coming. It's inevitable. Oh, no, and yeah. people will say it won't heat anything up, and all you're I living with one of those. Because you should go heat pump next, Gary. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. My pipes yeah, are my reckon. biggest. Problem. We've had this conversation. Pipes. Yeah, my yeah. pipes are my biggest problem because they're a bigger job to replace them. Not that big a job to replace them. Yeah. What about replacing all the ones in your house? You might, you might not need to. We could do a separate episode on that. Yeah, yeah but okay, okay. But they go through they go through web joists and they just lay there. So as they hit that pressure, you need to replace them. 
Well, just do that again. Well, just do that. Again. <laughs> the pressure. Well, no, you know they, they flick now when they come on. You hear them dunk, du dunk. Yeah, you know, when I start having them, yeah, going in yeah, there. Yeah, we need to talk. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. But this is an electrical channel, so let's <laughs> yeah, okay, pause okay. that for a minute. Yeah, we're not. not yeah, doing heat, any heat pumps and, and energy storage is is a really really obvious combination yeah. that that I think the industry as a whole is missing really. Um, uh, yes, there's some capital cost to it. There's lots of big players coming into the market, though, who maybe aren't even charging people up front for the cost of the heat pump. Um, they're doing it on a sort of rental basis. So um, <laughs> on that basis, you might be paying a pound or two extra a month to incorporate a battery. You'll have a fraction of a running cost, and it's all coming down to the electrical contractor on site, knowing about these systems, working with people like Sunsync yeah. to make sure they've got that tool bag of solutions they can bring to the customer's property. Just stinks of opportunity all the time, doesn't it? Every yeah. bit of this. You should not be anywhere near anything that comes across a counter and is covered in white plastic, really, should you now? You should be jumping all over this. Now, the, the best and easiest way to save energy has always been staring us in the face. And for the past 20 years, obviously, we've been delving into saving energy, but it's, uh, it's, it's time to revisit something you're comfortable with, Gordon. Oh, it? lights, yes. Yeah, Let's you know. have a look at some lights. Yeah. You're a bit from LED fans. Yeah. A little bit of relax while we look yes. at the lights. Well, welcome to the Last Chance Saloon. Why do we call it the Last Chance Saloon? Well, it's congratulations to anybody who's made it this far and is still looking after installations that have old lighting technology in, like the HID lamp, like these compact fluorescent lamps, and that old favourite, the 2D. Yeah, and the advantage of changing over from that old technology, it puts a little bit of extra cash in our pocket, so maybe I could buy a drink at your last chance saloon there, Gordon. Well, yes, but even if you've managed to keep onto those, you've got a massive store of lamps tucked away in the corner of your workshop, that excuse is rapidly fading away because obviously the manufacture of fluorescent tubes has now been banned and those stocks are going to be diminishing. You are going to have to finally move over to LED, but luckily, the good people at Leadvance have almost reinvented every single lamp class that we've had since the dawn of the lighting age in an LED format, so it is really easy to do those upgrades. Yeah, and we still spot them out and about, don't we? We all do that, oh, I notice they've got an old fluorescent tube and all the rest of it. But when it comes to Leadvance, can you give us a little bit of a history behind the name, Gordon? Okay, so Leadvance came around when Osram sold their lamp business to Leadvance, but they carried on using the Osram name, but it's just now the family transition, so all products now will come branded as Leadvance. But in reality, you've been buying Leadvance products for quite some time, but now the packaging reflects it, and it's still that same familiar orange colour that goes back to the dawn of lighting time. This is my kind of electrical work it is. You only have to unscrew the original lamp or pull it out from its connecting pins and introduce the new energy efficient one, and as an electrician, I can just walk away knowing that I've done my bit for both the environment and putting money back in people's pockets. Yeah, and it does really fast payback. Lighting is one of the fastest energy paybacks you can ever have. But however, when I'm thinking of replacing old and inefficient things, Gary, we'd like to replace you, especially now you've talked about that complex solar and battery storage. I think uh, we'll cut back to that, but let's not forget, this is the easy way to save energy. and It's very cost effective. If you've got a problem replacing a lamp, maybe it's time that you call the team at Leadvance. Hmm. Sounds a bit like the A-team intro, that, Gary. Yeah, you wouldn't be faced, though, would you? No, you've got a whiff of Murdoch about you. Hey, I'm crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you slipped back nicely into the world of light in there, didn't you? So, uh, the easiest way to save energy. So <laughs> Osram's gone, Leadvance in? Yes, it's all what was Osram's, now Leadvance. OK, that's good. Well, yeah, be informed, be understanding. Them lamps, great, weren't they? All look like what we're so used to seeing, but energy efficiency. And I'm amazed how many lamps are still out there when you look yeah. around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we do that often when we're out, don't we? Mm. OK, so that's good. So we're, we're up to speed with that. We've got some great stuff. We have some great questions in. Where do you want to go next, Gordon? Uh, well, let's knock off some of the technical ones that we get a few times. So uh, obviously a lot of people have got legacy solar systems. Yeah, and there's a great one. If you're driving back over that way, as you go through Corn, back in the day, there must have been a great sales guy because there's a row of... Uh, bungalows. No facing. Yeah, they've all, they probably are actually, they've all got solar on. Yeah. So someone probably went in and sold them, can we borrow your roof? Yeah. Um, adding batteries to existing 
feed in tariff properties. Yeah, so you do it. <clears throat> so um, back in the day, don't I sound old saying that now? You are. Uh, when there was the feed in tariff, which used to pay people for everything that the site was generating. So not just what it was feeding back into the grid. So it had a really horrible name because everybody thought it was about what was going back. Um, there was feed in tariff would pay for everything that was generated and then paid for an amount that was exported. Usually that was deemed at half that was exported. Mm -hmm. um, loads of those systems still around now. There's probably about 900, 950,000 of those systems registered. So awful lot out there. Um, and a lot of those people now, very savvy customers, earning <laughs> lots of money, Gary, at what they're doing, uh, now wanting to look at fitting battery storage. So on the face of it, that's a really good, sensible option. But what you've got to be really careful of is that bearing in mind that they have a meter fitted next to the inverter, which is telling um, the customer that's needed, right? In this case. <laughs> so I've just got on that. It's getting really loud. I was like, yeah, you've got go. a meter there. Yeah. Oh, right. got one that's needed. Uh, and that's counting all the energy that's pushing back from the inverter up into the house or into the grid. And that's the bit that you get paid for. So then you imagine a scenario where what we do is we, we decide to maybe either change the inverter or somehow configure the batteries onto the side of the inverter that's downstream from that meter. So now at that point, what could happen using something like Agile is you then start charging up uh, the battery storage from an off-peak tariff and the electricity is going so the reverse through the, the generation meter. And then when you discharge those batteries, now it's going to start clocking that meter up and imagining that you're producing a, a feed-in tariff eligible payment, which obviously they're not very keen on people doing because in winter, and I'm not suggesting you do this, Gary, uh, with a feed-in tariff installation, you could just sit there and just charge it up all day. They've no idea how much energy has gone that way into the batteries. And then you can discharge it and get paid what, you know, certainly a lot of people are getting sort of 55, 65 pence a unit now if they're in at the very, very early stage. So one way of getting around that is by doing something called net metering. Mm -hmm. um, and if people don't want to do just a standalone inverter and battery setup, you could have a net meter. So you swap out that meter that's been installed. And now you have a meter that's capable of measuring the energy both directions. So both going up and when it's feeding the battery storage and what's being exported back, one's deducted from the other. And then the, the net figure is the one that you use for your feed-in tariff right. payments. But you do have to get in touch with your feed-in tariff provider. Uh, make sure that they're happy with any proposed alterations. And if you follow one of the standard arrangements, which this is the, probably the most common uh, within the Ofgem guidance, you shouldn't have any problems. Mm. What, what about, sorry to interrupt, um, you've got your traditional string inverter where they're getting their feed-in tariff and then they've got the generation meter. What if after that on the AC line that was chopped essentially and AC coupled into an additional inverter? So, so it's all relative to where the generation meter is. So if that's between the generation meter and the distribution board, okay, I'd, I'd be thinking a little bit about the load on the cable and, and the current flow and the protection. So let's imagine it's actually con connected back at the distribution yeah. board. Um, there's still a right for them to be made aware of it because it's still a change in use, but actually that would sail straight through yeah. and, and shouldn't present any problems at all. But that is then another inverter. And the thing that people really struggle with at that point is it's not all on one app or one yeah. means of being able to see exactly what's going on. When you do that as well, you usually end up with multiple CT clamps. And if anybody's ever come along an installation where you've got an original PV system, you've got an EV charger, you've got a, a, another AC thing, you suddenly have all these CT clamps together. And I think a lot of people don't realize that that can actually cause some um, interference issues yeah on its own, just having multiple CT clamps on the same line. So my recommendation is always try and go net metering. Yeah. Uh, and, and if you can get it harmonized around one ecosystem like the SunSync app, uh, app, so you can see what's going on across the whole setup. Yeah, mm -hmm. good information. Yeah, now well, obviously we're saying you've got to tell them what if someone just put, I'm just saying, there might be some... From Liverpool. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you get some... Stale dishonest. Yeah, you get some dishonest people. I mean, there's people who fit solar stuff in and don't even 
register it. No. And, uh, yeah, no. apparently. Same happens on EV chargers, I've heard. Really? Of. Just fill God. these things and don't fill in the paperwork. Would you believe that? Come, what are the chances? Yeah. So does anyone actually ever check those meters? So what, what they will do is if that starts to um, overclock too much, they know what everybody should be generating over a particular period. Yeah. So at some point it'll get flagged. Right. Um, back in the early days of feeding tariff, we, we do know some people who created AC to DC transformers right. and started, if, as it were, overclocking their, um, uh, their systems by just wiring that up into a spare MPPT on the underside of the inverter. Um, but the energy companies did get, get switched onto that quite quickly, in the same way as they would do um, with normal domestic usage. They know what the average consumption profile yeah. is. If it goes up, usually there's two or three people will come round and check and see what's being grown in the loft. You're right, they do, because I'm, I'm on feed in tariff for biomass. And as soon as you put a reading in that's out of kilter with previous years, you get a little box. You have, yep. to, you have to fess up and explain why it might be a little bit different. It's, it's been a bit colder. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Working at home a bit more than I was last year. That was the one that went in this oh, month. Oh, right, OK. Oh, yeah, OK. Yeah. yeah. So they do, they do question it, but I guess, yeah, if you... If you... So, so, OK, this is again for Gary. Yeah. So I haven't told, or have I told my energy company, would he have done that through MCS? Oh, should have done. Yeah. No, he's done the MCS form, so yeah. my energy company be aware that my bill might come down, so they won't be thinking... Gary's fiddling the meter. <laughs> yeah. So, so they, they, because there's no regulated payment structure going to you at the moment, because you're That's not right. on feeding tariff, nope. they, they probably won't be too concerned. Right, what okay. you might see, though, going into the winter months, is they'll want to actually have um, more in terms of a standing order, a direct debit for that energy bill. Um, going forwards then you'll actually end up having yep. especially if you start charging off peak you can yep. reduce that bill to well as you've seen around about a third or a quarter of, of what yep. you might expect yep. okay depends where i'm in the series whether i get to yep. it this winter yeah that's where we're going to get to yeah okay so yeah okay so they can yeah see that makes sense doesn't it i want to see how many kilowatt hours i've actually used that's the next thing to actually not not look at price Prices are relevant to it. It's the number of kilowatt hours that you reduce comparison November last year to November this year. See what the impact is. Mm -hmm. All right. That's good. Any other great questions coming through there before we move on? Uh, what, so it's interesting though, there's 950,000 feed in tariff installs. That's a good opportunity for you. There you go. You yeah. should be out. Keith, I think Keith's already <laughs> spotted it. <laughs> he's, he's expecting the order for the seven megawatts of storage in the Craven district by Monday. Yeah. And they'll, yeah. They'll, and they'll need some more trained installers though. So yeah, yeah. Let's, let's not forget that. <laughs> that, is, that is the problem. Um, just, just to keep people on and interested, talking about trained installers. Some part of the show, maybe towards the end, we're going to talk about training maybe people with the, the skills to do roofing and solar. We're going to, we're going to leave it a fester. No, we're going to leave it a fester on. on that for yeah, a yeah, minute there. Yeah. So if you think it's bad enough, they do a six-week course to become an electrician. You see how quickly you can get roofers to do solar. <laughs> Stay on to that later on in the show. <laughs> OK. Uh, no, no, G99. So how does G99 work with solar and batteries? OK, I'll take that one. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so on the G99, it's all about asking the DNO for permission, uh, whether you can have a certain capacity within the building uh, allowed and whether it works within the grid. So, for instance, if it's on a G98, if it's 3.6 kilowatts or under, it's absolutely fine, don't need to sign it. Uh, it's a sign and notify mm -hmm. uh, rather than ask for permission and be allowed. But anything over 3.6 is where G99 comes in and you have to ask for permission first from the DNO and they will then tell you, yeah, within the network that we have available, we're happy for you to have five kilowatts on the property or eight kilowatts on the property, etc. cetera. Um, so that's what G99 is. What was, what was the specific question on it? When obviously add batteries to it. So say you've got a G99 approval for an eight kilowatt system. Yeah, and so add in it, depends how the battery, it depends how the batteries are connected. So if you, added, if you had approval for an eight kilowatt sunsink inverter and had no batteries, then you could connect batteries directly to the eight kilowatt and not have to apply for any other certificate from the G99. If you had a system in already that was a string inverter and then you wanted to fit batteries, you would then have to add another inverter in and it's the inverter that the DNO is bothered about. So it's the inverter size. They want to know how much you can bring in and out into the house in AC. 
Right, so if you added just the battery storage separate, an AC coupled battery, in your, so you had eight, in theory the inverter could pump out eight kilowatts, Yes. and then you could pump out another five or six kilowatts from the battery, then you, you're breaking the G99. Yeah, it's, if, if you're separate systems, like I say, if you had an eight kilowatt string inverter, no batteries connected at all, connected, and you was approved for eight kilowatt, and then you had, you wanted five kilowatt AC coupled or five kilowatt battery, you'd have to have another inverter installed, and then, that five kilowatt inverter that you've got installed there would then need approval as well, as it's another source of essentially eight and five, you, you're having a total of 13 kilowatts in the house rather than eight. Right. Now we spoke to an installer that, that did your roof, yeah. and, and he's, he obviously goes on the new housing estates and starts mopping up these uh, installations. And oh, they've just, obviously, as we know, when someone gets solar, they bore the pants off the neighbours and stuff like that with their app and don't talk leaning over. The you, you're lucky you don't talk to your neighbour. He's got solar. And then obviously the next house gets it, and the next house. Ooh. Are there instances where people are running, where they're quickly running out of capacity? Well, that's interesting because Gary just says there that his neighbour has got solar. Yeah. Um, that would automatically take you outside of the DNO install and notify. Because what G98 actually says is if there are... Uh, generators, small-scale embedded generators, within close geographical proximity, which is a really broad term, but essentially what they're trying to get at is um, connected to the same transformer mm -hmm. within the same area, um, then that's something that they will probably want to know about first before you connect. Now, the good news is, although that sounds really complicated, um, there's a lot of DNOs, DSOs out there who now do this on a fast track basis. The bad news is that lots of DNOs do it differently. So it can be a bit of a headache if you're contracting within several DSO areas to actually get your head around what each one of them may or may not allow. So I should have asked permission even just to put my small one on? Qu quite probably, just depending what the uh, did. grid arrangement <laughs> I did. Yeah, was. Yeah. <laughs> it's, one that, it's, it's one that, that is, is frequently not fully comprehended. Everybody just automatically goes to the 3.68, 16 amps per phase, uh, and that's fantastic. Um, but there's other things as well. If you look down the really complicated DNO, DSO flow, chart, it's things like, has, is there EV charges there, etc. There's all sorts of reasons which may require prior approval. The even better news, apart from the fast track stuff, is that the ENA, the Energy Network Association, who are the people, the sort of trade body for all of the DSOs in the country, they're introducing a digital platform which is being piloted this December. So coming into sort of the start or middle of next year, as an installer, you'll have access to, to various partner platforms, which allow you to go on and go, this is Gary's house. I want to put this on, can I do it? And it'll come back and tell you instantly whether you can or can't and what level of connection you'll be permitted to have. Wow, that's, that's brand new news to me. Was that new to you? Uh, there's some, there's one, Northern Power Grid have got quite a good digital platform. Oh, okay. Basically just says no. <laughs> everything. <laughs> uh, everything. You can do it um, on the Northern Power Grid one. We did it in our cable connection scanning video. Yes. You can log in, tell you where the cable's on. You can draw in where you want to do a new connection and it tells you what cables are loaded up in the area. So you can estimate yeah. to get to a green cable, it'll cost you seven hundred thousand pounds and you right. just put a you put a battery in that's why there's going to be seven batteries down here by monday the level of detail they're going into is actually going to capture an ev charger of x and a heat pump of y and sometimes it's not just looking at the the maximum demand sometimes it's looking at the associated harmonics that come from some of those digital Ooh. devices connected oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. To get in on his yeah. harmonics. <laughs> we did we did that when we didn't get any tools out so just go back to sean sean's doing a very large estate in the south okay maybe in around the london area and he's what he's around this cul-de-sac or large cul-de-sac they've got some very large properties over 20 panels and the G99, and, and he's going in, and like he said, he does one, he does the next one, he's done five, six in this cul-de-sac area. He said, I'm concerned that the last person to say, or the last three, they'll actually say, you know, all of a sudden now, if everybody was out, some was beaten down, everybody was exporting, that the actual transformer in reverse, the windings couldn't take the actual uh, load that was being put on it in the opposite direction. 
So he says, every time I put one in now, the more and more I get, he says, I'm waiting for that one where they say no. I've got to go back to a customer and say, no, you can't because of, yeah. obviously, yeah. That. So pro probably James should have gone there first and sold a system to everybody in the cul-de-sac first. Yeah. And then they could have worked out exactly what the overall connection was. With a centralised um, storage. With centralised storage <laughs> container. Yeah, okay. he, he can do that in a day. The communal heard. area. There's a, yeah. somewhere for the children to play. Large yeah. steel Plug container. and play, I hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. With security as well. Yeah. So, yeah. we, so we can fl uh, fit a slide. To yeah. <laughs> but but uh, it's something I hadn't comprehended until he said it. So once he said that, I was like, well, it makes logical sense now, doesn't it? That, you know, you've got all of these large power plants. It's going, someone's going to be un unhappy. Someone well, so, well, so I'm thinking there, Gary. I'd oh, be really? thinking of the future. You'd be thinking, you've just moved into a new house. I'll just bang that application in anyway yeah. and not fit the stuff. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be the... Yeah. 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 So it can be a real issue. I mean, a new housing estate that should be taken care of by whoever's doing the grid connection application it's fair to say DNOs. <laughs> <laughs> or, or an idno I mean, I mean they should be aware of what's being Ooh. connected should be the operative yeah. word there but yeah and the same as when you're applying for a connection for an upgraded supply at some point that balance will be tipped yeah. and and that person the nth person is now going to have to pay for a substantial grid upgrade to get what they need unless perhaps they start looking at trickle charging battery storage yeah. systems and nice segue there we go <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's good okay you've been, been away haven't you recently i have it's changing the changing the tone of this yeah you well, have a little holiday you, snap obviously so holiday, holiday, what do we get up to on holiday yeah, where you been i was going to stick my head in a local ah. consumer unit so i was back in uh, back in italy and uh, found a little innovation. So let's have a look. Hang on, no, no, so do well, yeah, let's just hold this photograph here for a minute. Was it cold in it? It's got whiff of, whiff of AI about this, hasn't it? Because the colour palette is amazing. We've got a dark grey door in the background. We've got a dark grey jacket on the gentleman. We've got a light grey to the wall. We've got a light grey t-shirt and haircut as well. He's light grey, the same as the Black breakers. Black yeah, so <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's very on trend, that picture. You wore colours to match the fabric of the building. I love it. Yeah. So what were you fiddling around in there, young man? Well, just have a little consumer. Well, I found actually in, in one in one board this little thing here called a pry cam. Oh, right? now, first, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's on your holidays. It wasn't in the bathroom area, was it? This pry yeah. cam? No, the cam's not a camera, connected asset management. Oh. So, this is, I think, it's a great little idea. Um, so, this is a monitor that sits in the in the consumer unit and monitors all the electrical parameters to do with the installation. Okay. Um, and I thought the interesting one, if you flip to the next one, Please scan that QR code. Please scan that QR code. Please scan that QR code. They might be able to hack into your, your own Let's system. See. Yep. Uh, so this is the sort of things it, it measures. So obviously power is an easy one, things like that. But it'll give you a measurement remotely of things like earth leakage, uh, the leakage current. Okay. Uh, earth le resistance, because obviously most of Italy is on TT systems. Um, okay. So things like that. So I thought that's a... That could be a useful thing, isn't it? Temperature down the bottom there, device temperature. Yeah. Okay. So, so will that monitor the, the when you say device? Is that like the whole enclosure or it's individual device? Yeah, the temperature in the enclosure. So, there's all these things we've been worried about. You know, about obviously fully loaded breakers and dissipation of heat and that. So, this device here could look as if it's a little bit of an intelligence. How much is that going to cost us? About two hundred pound when I looked at there. Air fryer. Or uh, yeah, air fryer or <laughs> one, a fifth of a battery. Fry. Well, not quite. Mine was a little bit dearer than that, but yeah. So. Uh, that's that's clever. I like that. Yeah. So, what do people think about that non-ABB device fitted inside an ABB enclosure? Can get... we ask them in the comments and see what they say? <laughs> that'll, be, that'll be straight in there. I mean, someone's already spotted it's a Type AC RCD, which you still can <laughs> use in Italy. Uh, yep, that's the thing. And then obviously people are B-type RCD. Well, no, that's all. Um, yeah, they're all. Um, you can do anything out there. You can do anything <laughs> in there. Have you seen some of those boards? <laughs> oh, and there's yeah, three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's, he's out in Italy pizza. now, yeah, doing his old yeah. pizzas. But is because obviously a few things that happen in Italy, they've got really skinny power supply, so you've only got three or six kilowatts as the standard supply, so they used to just things tripping off everywhere. So getting a little bit of an alert that you're up at a power limit or you're approaching a power limit can help, but I think... Obviously, we're starting to worry about pen faults here. Yeah. We're starting you to think that, that would spot one, would it? Because it's monitoring the current in the neutral in the It'll earth. measure the difference between the, um, the CPC and the neutral. Will do. So yes, that, it that will do. So that give you early warning that you maybe you've got a bit of a problem? Well, all these EV charger ones, most of them are doing that, aren't they? They're measuring the difference. They're measuring mm -hmm. for high and low voltage. So yeah. 
Yeah. So there's there's a debate, isn't it? People saying you should fit a pen fault at the origin of a supply. Yeah, I'm, I'm up for that. And um, that company's just um, launched one, haven't they? Um, Matty have done a unit, haven't they? That'll monitor your um... from inside of the meter box. Yeah. Yeah. That's where it should be. Yeah. That should be. You know, if we we're, we're solving their problem, mm. their, their kit should be in their box. Yeah. Unless the door blows off and it's our box, different story. Mm. Okay. Yeah, that's good. So that was a little bit of innovation that you found. A bit of innovation. Time. We'll see. We'll see what people think. We might try and get one in. Yeah. Uh, the only problem is, I think it's only rated at forty amps. Because <laughs> <laughs> the supply is absolutely naff. That's probably why. Right. Yeah. Uh, Mix yeah. and match isn't a problem in Australia either. So there we go. Apparently. <laughs> so. They've got spiders, things like that. Right. So I, I could do with a little bit of a little bit, bit of a break here. Yep. And before we, your segment's actually next, young man. I'll give you a little bit of time to think about maybe your choices in life and, and how you've spent time in front of maybe people who install slate and ceramic and maybe clay tiles for a living. That, okay. was, a, well, that was a workshop yeah, we yeah. did, wasn't well, it? We'll, weekend. We'll, we'll get. Well, yeah, I, I wouldn't have thought it took a weekend, but we'll come back to that. But we, we, we've cashed in. We see a lot of people coming through with how much they thought we've got for our, for our bin. Oh, Is it right. time to find out? First of all, yep. I just want to say, first of all, we need to segue in with a little bit of sweeping up. Mm. Okay, so have we got any footage of anyone sweeping up? There it is. Oh, we always say the slowest sweeps up. It's a fix. <laughs> He fix. My, my wife's gonna. Uh, my wife's gonna see this. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you do I'm look. Never ask you to sweep up again at home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so obviously, you, you, and the bin was empty. I think. I think it, you heard a lot of distance before you hit the bottom. There was a thud. There was a thud because we've emptied it. Yeah. So that means we've got to. We've got to come up with a segment for Joe this week. So Joe's been on interviewing, so let's cut to the footage. Who's turning up at eFix today? Looks like it's the team from Green Cable come to collect our bin. So quick before they get here, better collect that last little bit so we can make sure to fill it up to the top. So let's go and meet who's turned up. So I'm here with Ed from Green Cable and it is time for the eFix team to cash in on this bin. For our channel viewers that don't know what this bin is, Ed, can you just give us a brief summary of what it does? Green Cable is basically a scrapyard on wheels for trade professionals. Electricians, notably, are really quite guilty of leaving scrap cable in skips or on site or just throwing it away altogether. And obviously there's valuable material in there, notably copper, and we saw a great opportunity to start helping them recycle it but also cash in on it because it is obviously worth a decent amount of money. Yeah, so we think it's a brilliant idea here at eFix. We absolutely love watching people tidy up their cable after completing the challenge wall and put it in here. Obviously, our core viewers are electricians. Would you say they are your biggest customers? So electricians were our main focus originally. However, in the last 18 months, we've really diversified with plumbers, heating engineers, manufacturers, and now most recently the BBC and the NHS. It's great how you're branching out into different sectors. Whereabouts are you based and how far do you actually cover? So we're based in Cannock, just outside Birmingham. Okay. And we started out covering around a 20 kilometre radius when we first started the business a few years ago. But we're now reaching around 80 to 100 kilometres in total from there. So we're now reaching as far north as Manchester, Liverpool and surrounding areas, across to Nottingham, and down to Leicester, and then also we're covering the North Cotswolds, so Cheltenham and Sirencester and along there. So really quite a large area. What's important to us right now is if you're interested in using the service and we can't get to you, please still sign up because wherever there's a waiting list, we will then expand into there once the demand is present. That is quite a big growth in range considering you've only been operating for two years. Let's say that I'm an electrician who currently takes my scrap to the scrapyard. Mm -hmm. What would make me make the switch to your service? Good question. So you already know there's value in the cable. You want to be responsible and make sure it gets recycled. Green cable is a really convenient service and obviously enables you as an electrician to store the scrap safely and cleanly at home or work. But as well as that, it's also factoring in your time. Now, our prices are incredibly competitive. In many cases, we actually pay as much, if not more, than regional scrapyards, believe it or not. There's a great statistic where we've generally worked out that in cases where scrapyards pay a little bit more than us, the price difference of an average bin for an electrician is about eight to 14 pounds. Now, when you factor in the time it takes to load that material into the van, go down to the scrapyard, wait in a queue, get served, come back. Maybe it's a couple of hours. I don't know what the average hourly rate is for an electrician, but I'm sure it's more than that. So after that, I'm sure quite a lot of you are enticed to sign up to receive one of these bins. 
let's say that I want to sign up. Is there a minimum frequency that you come to collect these? Yeah, so we want to encourage as many customers as possible to start using the service and to receive one of our bins. Generally, if you're not filling a bin within a year, ideally twice a year or more is what we yeah. recommend for new customers who want to start using the service. However, I would say that a number of customers have signed up received their bin and expected to only fill it around once a year. The funny thing about these bins is that it does change the fundamental habits of trade professionals because yeah. as soon as you know you've got effectively a cash machine at home that all you need to do is fill it up with non-ferrous scrap, cable, copper, brass, whatever it might be, you know it's going to generate money for you and you suddenly start becoming magnetized to waste on site and out and about day to day. Yeah. Funny that you mentioned cash because I think it might be time to take a look in our bin. We've had it for about five months. So should we step up and have a look how much we've got? Let's do it. Okay, let's open it up and see what we've got. Excellent. So first of all, big green tick for filling it to the top. That is a prerequisite for using our collection service. Obviously, we need to make sure the value is there to make it worthwhile for us to come out and collect. So well done on that. Now I see a variety of cable types in here. Generally multi-core, so falling under the household cable category and then paying accordingly for that. Yeah. Obviously, we can see some armoured in here, and what we'd do with that is we'd pull it out when we take it out to the vehicle, and we'd weigh that separately because it carries a lower price than the standard cable. Okay, so you'd recommend that people separate that beforehand? Yeah, it helps our team a lot. If the armoured is maybe in a pile or a reel next to the bin, or um, separated somehow in the bin uh, itself, then that's fine because some customers will put armoured in the bottom, and then household and other cable types in the top. Yeah. But there's no obligation. At the end of the day for us, it's only an extra couple of minutes. And if it's easier for you as the customer just to bung it all in, absolutely fine. Should we get it on the van and see how much it's worth? Let's do it. Let's go. So what we do now is we get your bin onto our vehicle to okay. weigh the material. Any idea what you think this is weighing in at? My guess will be about 55 kilograms. Right, okay. I'll tell you an interesting game we play with customers. The customer makes a guess of what it weighs. However many kilos they are off, they have to do the same number of press-ups. Okay. You look like a fit bloke. I'm sure you can manage it. Would you like okay. to change your guess? I think I'm going to stick with my 55, yeah. Okay. I'll take part in this game. I'm going to go 65. Let's see how we okay. get on. So we'll just turn the scales on. So don't be alarmed. The bin weighs 10 kilos and we take that off the total weight. The number is showing what, Joe? 87 at the moment. Therefore, minus the 10 is 77. And what was your guess? 55. Now, my math isn't the best, but I believe that totals 22 press-ups. It is indeed, and I'm not very happy about that, but this is a promise. <laughs> so after the bad news of having to do 22 press-ups, I think I'm now ready for the good news. So let's find out how much our scrap is worth. So, Joe, to confirm, we have 77 kilos of household cable in there. Correct. And I had a little ring around the regional scrapyards and metal merchants today to see what they were paying for this. You are getting exactly the same price collected, so you don't have to faff around getting it into your van and getting down to the yard. And today's price is, drum roll please, 138 pounds and 60 pence. So that's your bin all emptied and ready to go again to fill whenever you're ready. Whilst the rest of the team fought over what to do with the money, I waved bye to Ed and got ready to fill our bin for the next collection. If you want to sign up for this amazing service, check the link in the description. But for now, that's all from me. Well, I think he done another brilliant save. I think we'd bring him in because I think he can live tell us who's won the prize. Look, I've left him all in there. He's, he's got his <laughs> mic turned on. He's faffing around in the corner. Gonna bring yourself in? I will bring myself in. Yes, yeah, so it, it is time to... Um, to give the prize out. So the weight of the cable was, uh, I believe, 77 kilograms, but the monetary value of that was 138 pounds 60. And the closest, it's him again, it's Alan Chan, 130 pa 135 pounds 50. So well done to you, Alan. We will send you your Wago probes. We must have about 15 of your addresses in the phone by now, so don't bother with that. I'll find you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless him. Okay, so yeah, we see him at shows and we've met him, we spent time with him, and he's a serial winner. That's yeah. what we want. Regular viewers coming in. Again, if you're a regular viewer and you've been commenting, there is a fantastic chance you get a shout out in the register and you may even appear in the end credits. And now you've run out of road. Okay, oh. young man. So. I'm well, a roofer. Griff normally upset somebody. Yeah, he's a, I'm a roofer. Maybe I had a bit of tarmacking at the weekend as well. Throw a few, you white, that pe type. few white pebbles in there, <laughs> yeah. give it a bit of dressing. Yeah. White okay. gold, bit of UPVC, yeah, cleaning yeah. gut as well. I'm up there. 100%. Yeah, I yeah. can do all of that. 
I'll come and see GTEC training. How long before you make me into an electrician? How long is them roofers taking to get through? Oh, an electrician? Well, what that's kind, what you, what kind you, of electrician? Well, they're going to fit solar panels. There must be electricians. Well, roofers now. are already fitting solar panels and they have been doing for years and years and years. Oh, so sounds like you're digging. What we're trying to do is to make life easier for our electrician friends. Because you said earlier on, quite rightly, electricians don't want to be up on the roof, right? No, That's don't. not their primary skill set. What, what, who should be up on the roof is the roofers. Totally agree. But there has to be an element of electrical work that they're going to do. Now, that might only extend to plugging a few cables together, but remember that when the sun's out, the modules are... Live. Live, right? So they're going to be live working. So we've got to give them a bit of a comprehension about what's going on and make sure they can do that very limited amount of plug and play work in a safe as possible way. And do they, when, when we did my one, they, they brought the cables around in a certain pattern. Yep. And they, they tried to sort of semi-explain that while I was watching tiles drop off and having all kinds of customer <laughs> moments. Is that something else you'd explain? Would you maybe yeah, even stretch to an MC4 connector? Yeah, so what we're trying to do um, with, with the roofing fraternity that we're seeing is to make sure that they understand a bit about the system, not, not electricians at all, but they understand enough to know what's going on with the system. They know how the cable should be uh, routed and how the cable should be mounted um, and also how that then gets through the roof into the loft space or down the side of the building, ready for the electrician then to make those all important final connections. Okay, and is this looking to try and get an ECS card? Is there some sort of minimum requirement? Is there gonna be something they need to get on site with or is this just to, to upskill people who are already skilled? Yes, yeah, so that's a really, really interesting question. I think the industry hasn't quite got to grips with the fact that at the moment, there's lots of roofers out there who, who are doing electrical work on new build sites. Right. Um, yes, it would be ideal if we could get them some kind of skills card because as soon as the, the local savvy site foreman realises that, they're going to go, hang on a minute, I've got a person here doing electrical work and they haven't got a competency card for, for doing that. So yeah, absolutely, we're, we're working towards that to try and get that, but it's realistically only talking about those very simple connections up on the roof, trying to make sure they leave that safe for our electrician friends to go and do the final connections. And I can see that only being a good thing. I'm a big, big advocate of the roofs done by a roofer. Okay, I understand we can upskill ourselves. In reverse, I don't think we've been on any roofing courses. There's no ECS card for electrician turned roofer. So if we reverse the process around, we're quite happy we're having a dibble. But when we're in the electrical industry and we watch a roofer maybe making pushing some connectors together or routing some cables, we start screaming and roaring. It's just a reverse process. I think it's only good. And it's no, no different to any other kind of domestic work where perhaps we might have taken too much of a timber out of a particular joist run or, or a stud wall. Uh, and <laughs> we should then be time. asking our carpentry friends to come and uh, <laughs> come and make that good, shouldn't we? So uh, we're just trying to follow that path through uh, a bit further to its natural progression. But hey, you know, the electricians are really good at doing the electrical work. Um, don't want to be up on the roof most of the time. If they do want to fit solar as well as a battery storage, then let's try and make sure that both halves of that team can work together coherently. Totally agree. I think it's a great idea. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I've played it in as a massive negative. Absolutely not. No, 100%. I think the right people should be doing the right jobs. Yeah, well, so a roofer doing an MC4 connector, what could possibly go wrong? Well, we've seen plenty of electricians do <laughs> MC4 connectors and things possibly go wrong. I don't think wrong. we said that. I think we said pushing connectors together and routing cables. Yeah, I don't absolutely. think we, we said anything there about making cables off, did we? No. No, at all. Yeah, so I just want to clarify that because you didn't and I didn't. Nope. Yeah, so, okay. Yep. And again, that, that brings up a nice one. We did a lovely little short. We haven't done a full review on it yet. You used some sort of torque wrench on the back of that uh, MC4 connector. What made you in any way decide Gordon Routledge to start putting torque on it? Yeah, following the manufacturer's instructions. What, are, what are the chances? Mm. Hey? Is that why we had to buy that? Because the manufacturer's instructors of MC4 connectors stated, was it 3.2 or 3.5? I can't remember. Uh, yeah, 3.25. Oh, was it? Okay, of so. torque on the back of there? On the back, not on the back of the connector. So yeah. that wasn't something you randomly did? It was something, obviously, we started looking at MC4 connectors, yep. and then suddenly you're in a world of of interesting places. So obviously the regulations, yes, they've got to be the same manufacturers or type tested. Or type tested to 50521. Yeah, which yep. nobody does. 
I, 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 that, it together. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> yeah, okay. no, no, I don't think you can find a, <laughs> someone of that. <laughs> yeah, I was back in. No, 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 no. no. I'll withdraw my allegedly. <laughs> no, 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 we we to, take it back. We went through the loop on, on yeah, we did. four connectors. And interesting, Staubly do this little depth gauge so you can check that the crimp pin is yeah. latched into the connector housing as yeah. it should be. It makes a nice click. Yeah. Um, and the interesting thing when you, when you take their depth gauge and start using it on other connectors, <laughs> on one better connector, it wouldn't even go in the connector. Oh, right. So the, you can start to think, well, they're not really compatible, are they? Yeah. So, and, um, so I thought, right, so then we started speaking to Staubly and Staubly, oh, we've just brought out this new toolkit a year ago. Okay. Uh, and then I waited <laughs> nine months and, and then finally managed to extract one out of someone. It yeah. was, yeah, well, they're, they're not cheap, let's put it that way. A couple of air fries. A couple of air, an air fry and a half, oh, I think. Yeah, yeah, so or <laughs> 10 air fries if you go to Costco, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. apparently, in the yeah, comments. How much are they in Costco? Because I'm not a member of Costco. 45 pounds. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mine's pretty deep. Mine's a good one. Yeah. A good one. Well, you could, you could use it. You can't do MC4 connectors on it, anyway. Okay. So, but the instructions, yeah, they're very clear. Proper cable lens, proper crimper. Um, and then the uh, click it in together, check with the depth gauge and tighten it up with the torque calibrated uh, back nut. And as a manufacturer, you're always stating, following the manufacturer's instructions. We've just had our conversation there where I tried to give you a bit, a bit of banter about our roofers. And obviously you've taken a little bit of stick of using a torque setting on the back of an MC4 connector, which links me nicely into uh, the segment that we're going to do from Joe Hammond. Oh, yes. Which is where we get a chance to, to answer back to some of these comments. And we're going to leave it to Joe. And he did it last time out and it was hilarious. So we'd like to go back in and we'd like to see what it is. Comments corner. I couldn't remember the first word. Let's join Joe. Hello and welcome to Comments Corner, the section where I get to look at some of the best and worst comments from the last few weeks from you, our viewers and keyboard warriors. And you've not disappointed with some amazing comments coming in, which not only raises debate, but also raises a few eyebrows as well. Remember, it's these comments that keep us going. So if you've got a question, make sure you fire it over to us and we'll do what we can to get an answer to you. It's been another busy week for us at eFix with the solar and storage event at the NEC Birmingham. Gordon finding a rooftop location with the dynamic firework that is Griff Thomas from GTEC, and Joe getting into a tight squeeze in some trunking. But we start with a short we put out on Facebook. And this was Efix own rig making off some MICC, or pyro, cable to be terminated into a fireproof isolator. Well, our international viewers hit this one up with Jeffrey G. Holly saying, what is this for? We don't go through this type of hell in the USA. I can't do an American accent. But the childish British humour won the round, with Dave Meal commenting, to mega the apprentice at the other end. Well, if we're splitting hairs, Dave, it's insulation resistance. But still, let's not mega anyone, shall we? Tony Elmore says, wrong. Well, why is it wrong, Tony? T why? Why, Tony? Tell, tell, tell us! We released our first AI instructional video with AI Joe taking the lead, and you were quite cross. At Fu Mangchu 5 LTR, a bit disappointed this used AI to produce a video. Normally well presented video by actual humans. And at M1LAD81, I've seen that guy advertise dubious doorbell cameras. Nothing but a scam. Shame he fixed it, not use a real person to do the voiceover. Gordon on holiday. Is he? If he has, he's not invited anyone else. At Abdul6930 came in with, I'm stalking Joe Robinson on eFix Electrical News Weekly. Okay. Uh... But the final comment from at Cyprian B12. Guys, I personally think that you should advise us how to do the best, not the law requires. That said, I worked personally as a pack tester for seven years and replaced more than 3,000 plugs. What, you worked as a pack tester for seven years? S seven? <sighs> you poor, poor thing. Down at Solar and Storage, we had Gordon do his best Paul Hogan when discussing the Swiss Army knife of batteries. And Gordon, fresh back from his holidays, did a sterling job to explain how the one megawatt battery works with at Billy Lyons 1680 saying, brilliantly explained as usual. And at Colin Richardson, nice, more expensive than my house, but one megawatt hour should be enough storage for at least one of my daughter's showers. Mm. And at Andrew Watson 3576 coming in with, 
I bet Gary was drooling over them, thinking how many meals he can air fry with just one charge. And yes, Andrew, we evidently didn't hear the last of it. Finally, we put a short out showcasing our new toy, a PV insulation kit, which includes cutters, crimpers, and torque ratchets. Perhaps though, the editing was a little bit intense with at Pedro3474, this video gives me a panic attack. And at Rebel Photon claiming, the editing style kills kittens. Well, I can assure you, no kittens that I'm aware of have been killed in the making of our videos. Meow. That's it this week from the Comments Corner. Be sure to keep firing in those comments, and who knows, you might even get yourself a mention. But until next time, it's ta for now. It's an absolute pleasure to have him as part of the team. He brings something completely different. We look forward to every video that he drops, and he's just dropped one recently on a Wallbox EV charger, hasn't he? It is, yeah, it's worth a look at, yeah, because it, it brings up the dreaded looped supply at the end of there. Don't yeah, we do. the end in a way, but uh, yeah, there you it's go. definitely worth watching it. So, from an electrical aspect, as much as the comedy elements that Joe brings to all of his, along with his facial expressions and his quick wit, absolutely fantastic. So, thank you very much for Joe for bringing that one in today. I wasn't even expecting it, was it? It was a surprise. Oh yeah, I've done one, haven't he? So he just launched that one in us as well. So that is brilliant. So just to give people an update where we are before we do the register, College Connections, obviously I'm out and about all in the month of November. I'm going down to the, the Big South. I'm going down to Devon to do a couple um, next week. And then after that, I'm moving further north. So I've got four College Connections this week. And we'd like to thank everyone that does support those College Connection roadshows, letting me get out to colleges. And we've discussed it over dinner, didn't we? How important it is to support the industry. And I have asked, uh, and if he is on, I've, I've asked Keith whether he'd support us as being our solar and battery installer supporter moving into 2024 so i'll slid that one is he still on keith <laughs> no, <it's not> that. <laughs> every week now it's who does joe look like i've always <laughs> it this time is that tom carriage before he's died <laughs> <laughs> right. it's like, it's like, it's i thought you grow more hair after you die so obviously we're there. we got one of those let's 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 go over and see if we've got any winners over there so we must have a gt time winner that's not going to get a prize we're going to get the name shouted out next uh, yeah but just before we get to that we'll do the register okay so, uh, yeah, thank you for staying on this long. It means a lot to me and the team. Let's start. So we've got Sockets, we've got Sean Dempsey, we've got Billy Toy, we've got Nick Earlham, and hopefully I won't get stitched up this week as we have for the last two times that we've done it. We've got Chris Horn, we've got Humboldt 93, we've got Ollie, we've got Ross Sands, we've got Troy Boy, we've got Ian McDonald, we've got Early Years Learning is Fun, Smart Spark UK, Vac Tool Guy, Red Snare, Davin Connis, RTCM, Matt Marine Eng, Paul Reynard, Richard Cockerline, Blue Electrics, Gavin Gini, Kevin Osborne, Neil Bridgman, Dan Sparky in training, Richard Bushnell, James Muller, Kevin Gravel, Chris Osborne the Sparky, Mark Von Kano, Angel Simeonov, in Pendulo Services, Short Circuit, Michael Williams, Joel Egan, and Roger Brookfield. And while we're here, we'll also do the GT time. So, Lee's time was 5 minutes 38. The closest to that was Smart Spark UK, who I just mentioned in the register there at 5 minutes 24, so go to the link in the description, fill out the form and get involved, Tom, and we'll send you a prize. Well, we won't, but thank you very much. You got a nice shout out anyhow, so yeah, <laughs> Mr. Chan's got more chance of bumping into him giving him his prize, so that will be brilliant. But thank you ever so much. It's been an epic because we've had some epic people on the show this evening. So we'd like to thank Griff returning again for the second time. I'm sure you're going to be back again by popular demand. I do hope so, but Gary, I've got to tell you I've got a little present for you. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Because I know how much you, you desperately need another battery. Whereabouts is it? I think oh. we just managed <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. to pop it behind the seat here. I so. doubt there is one there. Here we yeah. go. So. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> you go. Yeah, there's yeah, your, that's uh, your brilliant. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> brilliant. It's uh, my second battery, just what I was uh, looking for. Yeah. So a few, few more appearances on the show. I'll bring a battery with me every, every time. time. Okay. And you'll be able to sit at home soldering those up to your heart content. Okay, all right. And we've got two people from Sunsync. It's a bit like having two batteries, but when you've only got one battery, it's not like the two people from Sunsync. But I'd like a second one, so I can call my batteries maybe Lee, and I can call them I'll go Jimmy. I'll call Lee and Jimmy. So when I'm in there, I can say I'm having a Jimmy Lee. <laughs> I love it. On the cuff, that one was. So if I get me batteries, I'll put a little sticker on them and we'll name them after Gary, you Gary, would that be 
IP65 rated. What, I reckon in our house we haven't got to worry where we're tinkling at our age. <laughs> Yourself, I know you probably get there a little bit late. <laughs> You're not as nimble as around the hands in the fly area. I'd imagine there has been one or two times when you're standing in your... Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's usually yes. a damp patch in the roof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't tell me that. I'll check every time it rains heavily or keeps me awake at the best of times. We've had a great time today, and it's only thanks to the great people that support us that allows us to come live every two weeks, both on Facebook, which we've had a huge response tonight on Facebook, as well as on YouTube. We've been reading most of the comments from YouTube. We'd like to thank the great people at Seco Group that bring us great brands like the BG Sync EV, as well as Seco Lighting. We'd like to thank the wonderful people that were on last time out from Luden Palazzoli when we had uh, Giovanni, okay, yes. as they're now called there. Uh, Giovanni and the team were on last time out, so we'd like to thank them from Luden and Palazzoli for supporting us and the award-winning PV Ultra which you're sitting on this evening as homage to the great people down at Doncaster Cables um, let's buy British and let's buy the best is what I would suggest on there Gordon mm. any final thoughts any uh, there's, there's loads of stuff people got in there's some late chats coming in on uh, metering and CT clamps which I think we have to do some stuff on anyway because we get asked that question all the time and it seems to yeah there's lots of stuff. there's loads to go out actually and, yeah it's been fantastic comments tonight yeah, we, we appreciate everyone who stays on. There's been a lot of football on tonight, we know as well. Obviously, did Liverpool play this evening, sir? They were playing this evening. Yeah. Do we know the results? How did Liverpool get on this evening? Liverpool 1-2-1. That's good enough for me. We'll stick with that, even if it's not true. We'll at least be happy to <laughs> the end of it. So thank you ever so much for people that have given up their time on Facebook and on YouTube to, to listen to us. Hopefully you got something out of it. I would suggest I have. I know thank everybody around here for passing their information on. And hopefully it's contracting lectures you have as well. If you're watching it on Catch Up and you weren't watching it live, still put the comments in. It will help drive future live streams. But I think now it's time to say good night, good night, good night, good night, good night, good night, good night. Good night. And let's hit the credits, see if you're in them.